compare cheap van insurance quotes that really do cut the mustard at mustard.co.uk. Details online, authorised and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority. Clyde One Super Scoreboard Podcast with Lucas Volvo. Get 0% APR across the SUV family. Available on new Volvo XC40, XC60 or XC90 until the 30th of June. It's game day and this is the home of Scottish football. It's Clyde One Super Scoreboard. Good afternoon and welcome to Clyde One Super Scoreboard as we get set for the final league Saturday of the season. Champion Celtic will get their hands on the Premiership trophy before trying to win a treble next week. Good riddance to this season, says Michael Beale, but not before they head to St Mirren. And there's an Edinburgh derby to decide fourth before relegation takes centre stage tomorrow. I'm Gordon Duncan and joining me in the studio, you have Gordon DL, Mark Wilson and Hugh Keevans. The Celtic fans getting ready for a title winning party at Celtic Park after the game against Aberdeen. So much has been made of their recent slump in form. One point from their last nine, nine goals lost in their last three games. But let me begin on a positive note. Let me say that as they go into this game, Celtic have won two more league matches than they did last season. They have drawn three fewer league matches than they did last season. They have scored 17 goals more than they did last season. And at the moment, they have three points more than they got in all of last season. It could rise to six by this afternoon. So, you can say what you like about the recent slump. Celtic officially are better this season than they were last. It has been a long, dramatic, eventful season, Mark Wilson. And this is at the final Premiership weekend of the campaign. Yeah, it's a, a huge day and one that the players always enjoy going along to because it's a celebration of what has been a remarkable season for these Celtic players and Hugh is right to read out the stats and reflect on and what has been some incredible performances and they thoroughly deserved their day in the sunshine and the fans enjoying going along today but it's not all about Celtic Park, big games elsewhere and at Tyne Castle, Hearts v Hibs serves up what could be a classic afternoon with the winner of that taking European football. Yeah, I know that Celtic Park will be uh, the fo- main focus today. Obviously, the champions are lifting the trophy, Gordon, in front of a huge Celtic support. But there's a wee bit of pride there for Celtic as well, especially after the last three games. They've come in for a little bit of criticism, undeserved in my opinion. Aberdeen in good form. Hearts and Hibs is an absolutely cracker. And Rangers are what who finish the season a high, but that won't be an easy game at St Man. Yeah, an air of celebration then at Celtic Park. Let's go there and check in with Andrew McLean. Yeah, well, Ange Postacoglu says these are the days where the achievements really settle in. This is what makes all the hard work worth it. Callum McGregor and the rest of the players, as we know, they'll get their hands on the Premiership trophy after the game. Just before uh, the fans started to arrive inside the ground, Martin O'Neill carried the trophy along Celtic Way in front of thousands of them gathering outside. Ange Postacoglu and the Celtic squad walking behind them, being cheered along. So that's two-thirds of a potential treble in the bag, and they'll be hopeful of completing the set at Hamden a week today. But this is a day for them to share with the supporters, to celebrate what they've done over the last 37 league games. And I want to make sure that today, on the 38th, that they fare a bit better than they have of late. Postacoglu taking the blame for them being winless in three because he's rotated his squad. But today, it looks a lot more like the team you'd expect to be walking out at the National Stadium next weekend. As for their opponents, Barry Robson and Aberdeen, but well, they'll be looking to bow out on a high as well after achieving what most probably wouldn't have expected to be possible a few months ago. Third place is in the bag with a game to spare. Can Robson add to his achievements with a win against his old side today? Let's take a look at the team news and it is six changes for Celtic from that 4-2 defeat to Hibs during the week. Out go Bain, Ralston, Kobayashi, Bernabe, O and Haksabanovic. Interestingly, Kobayashi dropping out the squad altogether so that could well be an injury for him. In come Hart, Johnson, Taylor, O'Reilly, Jota and Kyogo. So it's Joe Hart in goal for Celtic. The back four, Alistair Johnson, Carol Starfelt, Tomoki Iwata goes back into defence and it's Greg Taylor at left back as well. The midfield three, Callum McGregor, Rio Hatati and Matt O'Reilly. Out wide, Jota 
Leila Bada, who incredibly makes his 100th Celtic appearance today, despite only joining uh, two summers ago, and Kyogo leading the line. The substitutes, Segrist, Turnbull, O, Burnaby, Forrest, Summers, Ralston, Welsh and Vata. As for Aberdeen, two changes for them, two enforced changes as well. Liam Scales can't play against his parent club, and Boyan Miofsky is injured after that challenge by Thierry Small during the week. In come Jack McKenzie and Marley Watkins. So it's Kel Roos that starts in goal. The back three, Matty Paula, Kangas McDonald and Jack McKenzie. The wing backs will be Ross McCrory and Johnny Hayes. The three in midfield, Ilba Ramadani, Graham Shinney and Leighton Clarkson. Marley Watkins will be partnering Duke up top. The substitutes, Lewis, Morris, Barron, Markindy, Coulson, Duncan, Richardson, Kennedy and Babbage. The referee at Celtic Park for this one today is Alan Muir. The VAR, Stephen Kirkland. Mark, you've been there before. How special is it on the day when all the hard work sort of comes to fruition, if you like, and you get your hands on that trophy in front of the fans? Yeah, it's a brilliant day to be involved in because you're right, all the hard work has added up to a day like this where the players can celebrate. Now, I know they've got one eye in the cup final next week, but they should enjoy a day like this where the sun is shining. And you saw Martin O'Neill there lead the team up the Celtic way and the fans turning out in their numbers. It's the work that goes into pre-season, the work behind the scenes, you know, the, the pressure that lies in the shoulders and the big games are all results in a day like today where Cal McGregor will finally get his hands on the trophy and day to savour for not only the players but the families who obviously sacrifice a lot as well. <laughs> they're seeing the players when they're travelling around the world and so many games within a season now. This is a day for... Everybody connected with the club. It must be a great day, Hugh, because we, you know you're on this treadmill almost here, and you're certainly in the goldfish bowl, and every, it's just one game after another, and it's sticking fast, and so much is said, so much outside noise, but just to finally maybe have that moment where you take it in for a brief second. Well, for the players, they're entitled to that because, as I said earlier on, they have scored more goals, they have won more points, they have drawn fewer games. They have had a season better than last season. All you can do is seek improvement and they have delivered improvement. I was on my local railway platform at 20 past nine this morning and it was packed with Celtic supporters. And every station I passed was packed with Celtic supporters at that time in the morning. Did you get a good reception? Excellent. (laughs) They've let themselves down. (laughs) But the, the air of celebration was obvious and it will be... Very obvious at Celtic Park today But I think the fans will also be slightly demanding Although they've won more, got more points, more goals, etc, etc The fans are looking for a pre-cup final performance from Celtic The the last three performances by Celtic's exceptionally Mm -hmm. high standards Have been unsatisfactory The fans are looking for a performance and a win Yeah, Yeah, I wonder, Gordon, if a lot of these things The truth somewhere in the middle Celtic Mm -hmm. have dropped points at home on flag day before Does anybody remember it? Does anybody care? I think the answer would be no the, the image from the day is when the trophy goes up But as Hugh says There is a cup final next week And obviously if you had your choice You would just rather The day was impressive and convincing And go into next week with a bit of a swagger Even although Celtic will be favourites regardless Yeah 100% uh, I just think that it's a bit unfair to criticism That some um, you know, sections of the Celtic sport have gave um, Celtic um, lately because of the performances. Hugh quite rightly says they set such high standards. Today's a reward for all the hard work and effort over a season, not just from August, from the start of the season, the pre season that every player used to dread and hate. All the hard work is into it, all the planning, all the work throughout the season, the games, the pressure. And as Mark says, you sacrifice a lot of time away from your family. So today's all about bringing that together, enjoying it. But competitively, there are a side of it that you've got to go out there and show that why you are the best team, leading up to potentially a treble next week. They'll want to come off this afternoon, Mm. enjoy their that evening with a good victory under their belt. Against the third best team in the country, Mark. So not not going to be easy. But then I suppose in a similar... Vain Barry Robson will say all the right things about wanting to win the game. It would be a real, it would be a statement to go there and get something, of course. But Aberdeen have done their bit similarly to Celtic. Nothing that happens today will will change that third place finish. No, Aberdeen have done incredibly well under Barry since the the change of manager, and they've got their their own reasons to celebrate today. And 
you know, they'll go out there and enjoy the game. But I know Barry well, and, and Barry knows Celtic well, obviously. He's incredibly competitive. He'll want to go there and win the game because it does look good on his CV, on his record, to say, look how I finished the season off. So it won't be easy. I think Ange Postacoglu and the Celtic players will embrace that challenge today rather than a meaningless, pointless, slow game. I think he would rather a game that's high in tempo, high energy, high pace against decent opposition. And they're going to have that today against Aberdeen. Aberdeen will carry a threat, but Celtic do have to raise their performances. I get that people saying, oh, it's a bit harsh. Yes, of course, but they have taken their foot off the gas. I think the Celtic manager will be aware of that. And although they'll get the trophy, Gordon, there's nothing better Mm. than picking up the trophy after a good performance and a good win. Let's go to Paisley. Good riddance to this season was the message from Michael Beale yesterday. But Roger Hanna, there's a game to get through first. Who have packed the stand away to my right. I think they would probably agree with Michael Beale take and it's good riddance to the season. It was a campaign, you remember, which started with Giovanni Van Bronckhorst at the helm and high hopes after a Scottish Cup win and Europa League final appearance. But it's ended with Michael Beale at the helm and no trophies. There's been a change of chairman, manager, chief exec, sporting director, and several players, the likes of Alan McGregor, Alfredo Morelos, Ryan Kent, Scott Arfield, Philip Alander, all going or gone, and several more likely to go with them in the summer. Kieran Dowell, he was unveiled at Ibrox in midweek, and he will start a summer influx of new signings. The Vroncos era, if you remember, ended here after a 1-1 draw in November, just before the World Cup. It seems a lifetime ago, Gordon. And it's worth remembering St Mirren also pushed Rangers hard for 80 minutes at Ibrox last month. They've beaten Celtic here in Paisley this season and gained a point in a 2-2 draw at Parkhead last weekend. They are without the suspended Thierry Small and they have their own lengthy list of injuries. There's no one in six for the hosts and they won't win one to end. It's been a really promising campaign for stretching that run to seven in the last home game of the season. Rangers, they shuffle the pack again. It'll be fascinating to see how many of today's starters also start the first game of next season under Beale. They haven't lost here in the league since Christmas Eve 2011 when the young Aaron Moy was among the goal scorers for St Mirren. So the Saints, they've got five changes from their midweek defeat at Aberdeen and it includes first league starts of the season for Peter Arminski. Kaelin Boyd Bunz and Lewis Jemison. So it's Peter and Minsky in goal, a back three, Joe Shaughnessy, Declan Gallagher and Richard Taylor. Across the middle, Ryan Strain, Marco O'Hara, Keanu Bacchus, Kaelin Boyd Munz and Scott Tanzer and up top, Lewis Jemison will partner. Curtis Main on the bench, Carson, Tate, Dunn, Fraser, Kenny, Gogic, Kilty, Offord and Fraser Taylor. For Rangers, four changes for the midweek draw at home to Hearts. That includes Leon King dropping out to the bench and John Lundstrom reverting to centre-half alongside John Souter. So it's Robbie McCrory back in goal. A back four of James Tavernier, John Souter, John Lundstrom and Red Van Yelmaz. Midfield three, Ryan Jack, Todd Cantwell and Nicholas Raskin. And a front three of Janis Hadji, Fashion Sakala and Rabi Matondo. On the bench, McGregor, Cholak, Wright, Barisic, Arfield, King, Devine, Lowry and Rice. The referee is Matthew McDermott and the VAR is Andrew Dallas. Hugh, it's... Um Difficult. You can always find a way. It's difficult to build this one up too much. It is, and it's a proper end of season game. You know, you look at uh, Alfredo Morelos is not even here, not even about yeah. contracts ended. They got their emotional farewells the other night. St Mirren can't improve their position. Rangers can't improve their position. Not one that will live long in the memory, unless Roger Hanna's in for some sort of bizarre twelve-goal thriller. The very least that Rangers can do on the day that Celtic pick up two in a row. And take the trophy home Is to deliver a performance And a result for the fans To send them away happy uh, They won't be happy with the season In general But the very least they can do Is win this match And not have the summer To reflect on a defeat in Paisley uh, At the very end of the season So it, it's all about How it looks It's cosmetics today Celtic have the title Rangers simply want to go home With some shred of dignity After playing in Paisley And that means a win It might not even be one people remember Gordon Depending Mm. how it goes And I don't like to talk that down It's not really our style But you you get end of season games like this For instance Even although the title was won There was still a period of intrigue there Where McCrory was getting a chance And fringe players were getting their their chance and, And would it be the end of the road for some Those have all been answered There's just not much left to answer there today St Mirren might want to really show Because they've given Celtic bloody nose On a couple of occasions 
And uh, well, they, they did do it to, to Rangers and Paisley earlier this season as well. Yeah, I, I think St Mirren will definitely want to take the scalp of Rangers. Um, they can look back in a very successful season and finish on a high looking for next season. I think that uh, Michael Beale will be saying, look, we've got a big support along here. It's Rangers Football Club. The standards should be up there that there's not such a thing as a meaningless game. Uh, so go and turn on a good performance. Do you know, I think the the sunshine, I think players love playing in, uh, apart from you, love <laughs> playing in the sunshine. It's a, Have you seen his sunburn? Look yeah, no, I've actually... I've he, not, he, over <laughs> indulged, <laughs> he overindulged in Armstrong this week. He, he's, he's been on the sunbed for 12 minutes instead of six. <laughs> I've started to peel. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's the only person that's peeling in Scotland. Yeah. <laughs> uh, How can but, you peel? Oh God, I'm, mate! I couldn't believe when I walked into the office today and I just seen this big red much. Because it's usually Mark Wilson that's <laughs> got the reddest face <laughs> on the planet. No, no, you're more. feeling jealous. You're yeah. feeling left out. Anyway, as you were saying. Yeah. So I, I think that all game, well, especially in Madabi, I'll be fantastic. But I still think there's a little spice to because as a player, you still want to win games. You 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 vote to the supporters who have come along in big numbers and paid a lot of. Uh, hard earned cash so I still think there's a bit of spice to the games yeah I suppose Roger it is the, the, definitely the end of an era there will be no final Alfredo Morelos goal most got their goodbyes the other night but maybe I don't know one last chance to to see well it would only really be Scott Arfield wouldn't it yeah, Scott, after all, McGregor's on the bench as well, but I'd be surprised to see him come on for any action today. I tend to agree with you, Gordon, that the, the least Rangers can do today is end the season with a bang rather than a whimper. They won't end it with any silverware at all. They've known that for some time, and this will be a very low-key finale to the season compared to the highs of last season in Seville and at Hamden. And I think a lot of people, Michael Beale in particular, will have a very, very busy summer ahead of them. So we're still looking forward to it Nevertheless in the Paisley sunshine St Mirren against Rangers Let's We've saved the best to last The most meaningful certainly Because it's an Edinburgh derby At Tynecastle And it has a lot riding on it Fraser Wishart It certainly does Gordon I'm quite fortunate to be here Because what a game to end the season The two Edinburgh clubs Tynecastle looks the perfect setting Sun shining pitch immaculate A wee bit of a breeze as the players warm up But as the fans fill Tynecastle Stadium up and Hibs fans to my right filling that away stand they got the whole of the stand today I think we're in for a real treat today last game of the season I said but plenty to play for for Hibs who are second fiddle the City rivals for most of the season they can overtake Hearts and move into fourth place as the season closes with a victory today it's amazing how football can change so quickly this looked highly unlikely only a few months ago Hibs manager Lee Johnson often under pressure as his team struggled in the bottom half well behind Hibs in the heart, sorry, in third they were third last season and had a good European on plenty of money, but Johnson finally found a settled team and hits Hearts had a bad run of form. Robbie Nielsen lost his job and now it's Hearts on the brink of dropping to fifth. Fifth, of course, should mean European Conference League qualifying if Celtic beat Inverness Cali Thistle in the cup final, but it'll mean another earlier start to the season for Rivers fifth. And of course, bragging rights all summer form the Hibs supporters if they get to that fourth place. Hibs must come here full of contest after that 4-2 midweek victory against Celtic. I feel like Nisbet and Yuan now forming a very potent attacking partnership and they'll cause Hearts many problems. Paul Hanlon and, and the Will Fisher strong at the back as well. Settled lineup from the Berlin. Hearts suffered injury to key players but they find themselves in a position where a draw will do but I don't think they'll be allowed to sit back by huge vocal support. Shanklin Ginelli key to that attack and I think how they defend might be the key to the match four hearts Tam Hill and Rolls cope with Nisbet and Yuan so really looking forward to this one fantastic occasion ahead at a packed time castle four hearts they make two changes after the draw against Rangers Civic and Forrest drops to the bench with Cochrane and Mackay coming in 4-2 3-1 formation Xander Clarks and goal Nathaniel Atkinson James Hill Kai Rolls and Alec Cochrane at the back Cammy Devlin and Peter Haring in midfield with Yutaro Oda Lawrence Shackland and Barry Mackay behind the lone striker Josh Ginelli Ross Stewart Michael Smith George Grant, Orestes, Kiyomo Joglu, Andy Halliday, Alan Forrest, Toby Civic, Macaulay Tate and Garang Kuyo are on the bench. For Hibernian, perhaps unsurprisingly unchanged from the win against Celtic. 3-5-2 formation, David Marshall in goals, Will Fish, Paul Hanlon and uh, Egan Riley at the back. Liam Miller, Jake Doyle-Hayes, James Jago, Joe Newell and Louis Stevenson in midfield with Kevin Nisbet and Ellie Yuan up front. Ma Murray Johnston, Marion Cabraja. Matthew Hopp, Michael Devlin, Ewan Henderson, Harry McCurdy. 
Josh Campbell, Rocky Bushiri and Alan Delisier are the substitutes and at Tyne Castle. The referee is Don Robertson and the VAR is Greg Aiken. Unbelievable Hugh, really looking forward to that. A last day shootout to decide which Edinburgh rival finishes above the other one. That's what it's all about. Bragging rights in the capital. Capital punishment if you lose that match. I think that uh, Stephen Naismith needs a win today to improve his chances of becoming Hearts manager on a permanent basis. How does it look on the CV when you lose to Hibs on your ground, final day of the season, and they leapfrog you in the table? So I think he needs that win today. Uh, Lee Johnson, there was the time, of course, when he played against Aberdeen in what was known as El Sakiko, and we wondered whether Jim Goodwin or Lee Johnson was for the high jump. Unfortunately for Jim Goodwin, it was him. But uh, Lee Johnson has staged a tremendous revival since then. So it's an outstanding match. I would just point out one thing. Hearts and Hibs are two clubs in the capital, two wonderful institutions within Scottish football. Hearts are 43 points behind Celtic at kickoff. Hibs are 45 points behind Celtic. That gap next season has got to be addressed not going to be addressed anytime soon when they earn much less money than the big teams I suspect um, Fraser Wishart the, what about the managerial side of things then it's a very big subplot can Stephen Naismith get the Hearts job on a permanent basis if he finishes below Hibs I would very much doubt it and I'm not sure he would get it even if he finish above, above Hibs because Andrew McKinley the chief executive of Hearts made it very clear when Robbie Nielsen lost his job remember I think Robbie lost, I think he lost here to St Mirren and they dropped from third to fourth and he lost his job and Ro- Alan, Andrew McKinley said the Hearts board see it that third is absolute paramount it's the minimum they expect and they're not going to finish third so I'm not sure whether you can give somebody the job on that basis but certainly a win would help him but a defeat in fifth place absolutely not and I've got a wee feeling that Hibs might just do this they've got a wee bit of momentum they've got they look solid at the back they've got strong midfield as well but Nisbet looks fully fit it looks strong and you are not front I think they can cause the Hearts back four real problems I fancy Hibs to pinch this one and get fourth place it's a big call that from Fraser mm. but he, he's right in terms of the way that they've been playing they've built momentum obviously helped by the result the performance against Celtic midweek and you've got to give Lee Johnson credit because he was right at one stage potentially facing losing his job but he's managed to turn it around and make this last game of the season a real blockbuster um, but I'm not so sure I think home crowd behind this Hearts side Stephen Naismith desperate to get that job we'll see Hearts get the job done it's got a draw written all over it <laughs> <laughs> it's a typical derby in the sun full house great atmosphere I think it'll be a good game I think it'll be an exciting game uh, I think Hearts will take a lot of encouragement from the last minute equaliser at Ibrox. I think Hibs will obviously take a lot of encouragement uh, beating Celtic. Okay, they were down to 10 men, but you've still got to get the job done. So, for me, two teams, end of season, Derby, draw. Managerial subplot, Stephen Naismith? Um, I agree with uh, Fraser. I, I doubt it, but if you go and get a good performance and a good result today, it's sort of I could swing things in his favour but if he doesn't get a result then he's absolutely no chance yeah going to be a fascinating one for sure the scene is set then three final games the top six teams all playing each other today the bottom six tomorrow and my goodness how exciting is that going to be finding out who out of Killian Ross County goes into the playoffs probably confirming Dundee United relegation as well but it's the top six first up and kickoffs are coming next now a word from our podcast sponsors Lookers Motor Group Lookers Jaguar Land Rover are currently looking to recruit vehicle technicians and on Wednesday the 7th of June they're hosting a technicians recruitment event at Lookers Jaguar on Mossland Drive in Hillington Park between 2pm and 7pm they're offering positions for all experience levels with some great benefits alongside comprehensive training programmes to accelerate your career further do you fancy it? do you fancy a, a career change? he's, he's a man at Knows yeah, his way around a toolbox. I, th- I can't. I, I'm, I it's can't a think. Time, you would be horrendous at that. What? You don't even know how to turn your windscreen wipers on and off. How I'm to? A car salesman, mate. I'm I, yeah, for what a day? No, uh, four hours. Honestly, <laughs> sell as a Land Rover. Go. Uh, four hours. Remember, you you went to test drive an automatic car the other week, and <laughs> you, you complained that it was broken, but <laughs> oh, actually it wasn't because you put it in like the manual setting. Yeah. Anyway, Mark. To be fair, the training is good, so maybe we could. 
We could train function, them up. We could train them Take up. Take a lot of work, but I'm sure they've got the patience to train you up. I'm sure they do, because vehicle technicians play a vital role within the Looker Service team by delivering first class customer service, and they want you. Not necessarily you, Gordon Deal, But they want you to be part of their success If you're a qualified vehicle technician Or an experienced mechanic If you work in a dealer group Or an independent garage You might just be what they're looking for So you can apply online By visiting lookers.co.uk Forward slash careers And make sure you tell them That Super Scoreboard sent you By quoting SSB Lookers, a better career in retail And now back to the podcast Absolute Radio presents Tim's Listening Party With Tim Burgess Throughout lockdown, every day seemed like a dark one So I thought the Listening Party would be a great way to bring people together So we played about thousands of classic albums Thousands? I say thousands, it's over a thousand So we played about over a thousand classic albums in real time All together, along with people who made those albums So it's about time we put it on the radio During the party on Sunday night from 10 When I'll pick an album to play back in full Alongside the original artists to give us their perspective in the studio. Tim's listening party. To hear the whole series, subscribe to the podcast now or check out the Absolute Radio app. The team with the biggest support in Glasgow and the West. This is Clyde One Super Scoreboard. Almost underway, but not before. An incredible display at Celtic Park that Andrew McLean can tell us all about. Yes, a full stadium display here, or a TIFO as it's called these days. Across from me in big letters it says stand on the shoulders of giants. Over to my left there is a big display that shows the face of Jock Steen, of course European Cup winning manager with Celtic in 1967. Ten league titles, eight Scottish Cups, six league cups as well. And then over to my right, Willie Maley, an incredible 43 years as Celtic manager. Imagine that in this day and age, 30 major honours during his time as well and you can hear the Celtic supporters and the noise they are making of course with Jockstein and Willie Maley and Postacoglu not quite in that category of those two yet but he is adored by these Celtic fans they hang on his every word and I'm sure they'll be very interested to hear what he says today with those links to Tottenham hotting up over the last few weeks you'd expect him to take the mic after the game and address the supporters his message last season on the pitch on trophy day was that he wanted Celtic to come back bigger and better this season and they've done just that more points more goals and the potential to win one more trophy than the last campaign as well 31 wins three draws and three losses it is in the league campaign so far this season with one game left to go this game against Aberdeen they were on for a record points total at one point certainly not possible now but if you're going to go off the boil a bit probably best to do it when you've already wrapped up the league title maybe a bit of subconscious letting up from the players Ange Postacoglu has rotated a bit but in the end it won't matter people will look back on the trophies won and the high points throughout this season rather than the last couple of weeks of course there is still a potential treble to come for Celtic but the fans will enjoy this one today we are underway at Celtic Park Clyde One Super Scoreboard Goal Flashes with Clyde Built Home Improvements. Buy now, pay nothing till 2024. You've got to move with the times, Hugh Keevens. Yeah. In your long, illustrious career on Clyde One Super Scoreboard, I can't imagine you've been asked for your opinion on a TIFO many times, but I think you have to admire the creativity and organisational skills for those who put that together. That was quite an astonishing display. And the fans, Postacoglu had any doubt at all about the scale of the Celtic club. Celtic have almost scored <laughs> yeah. inside 30 Yoko. seconds, incidentally, but sorry, carry if on. If had any doubt about the size of the club he's involved with, then that would erase all doubts. Jockstein, greatest manager in Celtic's history, someone that I began uh, dealing with uh, 53 years ago in this business, and let me tell you a story, and it's absolutely true. When Willie Maley died, I was a child. I was called upstairs, face-washed, and brought back out to go and line the streets as Willie Maley's coffin passed by to go wow. to the church in Partick. Uh, that's what Willie Maley meant to people back then. So, you know, he's just a name for the young Celtic supporters now, but that was the kind of influence that he had on the club. So that the TIFO display from the supporters, nothing short of remarkable. And he, the last, he remembered that because it was the last time he washed his face. <laughs> well, well, things, during the break, I heard him ask producer John, uh, what do you put on your face if you've got sunburn? It's called after sun. Uh, Is this an alien concept to you? Oh, I, honestly, when I came back in, my wife said to me, 
Oh no <laughs> Have a look in the mirror <laughs> And there it was A tomato With a nose <laughs> Tomato get, get that man some cocoa butter Oh it's looking bad. Imagine him with the Aberdeen strip on the day It's the same colour You would just blend in <laughs> There you are, forget the football, end of season, meaningless fare Get your home remedies for Hugh <laughs> Evans sunburn in please Tweet me, at Clyde SSB, at Gordon Duncan 7 What should the old fella slap on his <laughs> coupon? Um, I might regret asking that yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ask the question <laughs> <laughs> There'll be a good few and then uh, my, answers. my hand And then you wish you could take it back like yeah. instantly And then it's too late because it's live radio and it's out there Well I'll tell you what, it's great to hear about Hugh's red face But this game started off at a fantastic pace Kyogo ready Get running behind defenders Taylor made for the ball To be played in there Just drags it wide But good pace to the game uh, I agree with the lads uh, Just before kick off If you're Even Aberdeen players Would have had a bit of uh, Oh wow uh, Factor Going out to Celtic Park This afternoon Sensational when you see Something like that Coming together Because you hear that It's planned midweek Yeah I heard that And yeah. the, the organisation That goes into that But you're still depending On 60,000 people Playing their part in it And it is Holding Something else Holding up at the right time Holding up at the right time, the the right time And you know d- Keep holding it up Not just hold it up For a few minutes And then Throw your piece of paper away But it was Remarkable And he was right If Ange Postacoglu Was in any doubt Of the size of the club And what this means to the fan base You only had to look around the stadium mate. Feisty start to the Edinburgh derby as well Ten seconds in And Lauren Shanklin gets a Speaking to For clattering into Lewis Miller Near the corner flag He's had a great season of course We'll be hoping Today is also the The day we find out Who will be the top scorer <sighs> In the Premiership It could be Lauren Shanklin It could be Kyogo In fact sorry You'll have to wait until tomorrow To see what Kevin Van Veen uh, has up his sleeve But a really bright start At Celtic Park as well I think it's a statement day uh, Celtic are intent the, the, the TIFO display Was a statement In itself About the, the size of the club uh, The performance That Celtic Are trying to give today Is with the intention Of making a statement Before they go for A cup final win That involves a treble So They've come to show their supporters what the club means to them as well as the supporters. But Hugh's right, it it should be a statement today. They've came full circle. I mean, you go back to the start of the season, first game, Stephen Welsh putting Celtic ahead against Aberdeen, followed by Jota with an absolute stunning goal that sent the ball rolling for Celtic at the start of this campaign and they want to finish it in the same fashion right, a bit of a different schedule for us today of course with the three games all kicking off at half 12 let's hold that thought because Celtic are in the box but maybe just overcook it a little bit we do have a first half teaser for you though the first half teaser with the Scottish Sun.co.uk slash football for the best football news and opinion online Since the summer of 2019, Celtic and Rangers have taken a combined eight players on loan from English Premier League clubs. Who are they? Since the summer of 2019, Celtic and Rangers have taken a combined eight players on loan from English Premier League clubs. Name them. Good luck. We need all eight on one tweet. That is not going to be easy. But even if you can only think of a few, chuck them in there. You do need to get all eight to be in with the chance of winning. So at Clyde SSB, we're looking for one tweet with all eight answers on it and send it in as quick as you can. If you go to that Twitter feed, you will also see the question written down. If you need to remind yourselves of the wording, I'll remind you sporadically throughout the first half and don't forget to tweet me your home remedies for Hugh Keevan's sunburn (laughs) as well we can't possibly let that slip by this afternoon but Celtic have started very brightly Gordon Diel as Hatati goes a wander and Aberdeen do well to to crowd them out but it feels like they're moving the ball very quickly this afternoon I'll tell you what I like about this game already they're a great pace to it Uh, both sides I think uh, as a those Starfelts just wiped out who is it? Right on the halfway line uh, Yeah Marley Watkins Watkins yeah I kick. thought it was um, Good play by Watkins But <laughs> Starfield's just Absolutely wiped him out there he A mile away as oh. well You saw Watkins <laughs> Nick that A mile away Starfield but couldn't pull out Going back to the game Gordon It's been a terrific start You know sometimes These games right at the end of the season Obviously Everybody's talking about The start of it With the display and everything And Celtic uh, Looking forward to next week's uh, Trip to Hamden 
um, you can have a, a damp squib you can have a poor game I don't think we've got that I think we've got a good pace already uh, Leo Labada running down the right his 100th appearance it just shows you how quickly and what a run it is by the way the cross is not so Oh, I, do you know what? I thought that was one that was going oh, to be, going to be a handball. Oh. Yeah, there are claims. I wonder oh. if we'll have a little VAR check <laughs> or Ross McCrory. So you're looking for the usual is the hand outstretched because it was a high sliced clearance and as it drops down is above, that a shoulder? above the t shirt line. Yeah, 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 that yeah, might get away with it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Lucky, but it just gets lucky it all boy, wrong. perhaps. Yeah. But uh, I think you would be hard pushed to, to prove that that, yeah. And you can see the referees gesturing. Remember, it has to be below the sort of armpit area, if you like. So, um, no goals yet in the Edinburgh Derby. Feisty start there. No goals, Celtic Aberdeen and none St Mirren Rangers either. I suspect that'll be a sort of what the will end of season feel uh, about that one. Maybe not the other two, um, just for a couple of reasons. Oh. You've got the sort of emotion, the, the title celebration in the cup final next week at Celtic Park. And the Edinburgh Derby, massive. I'd love to be there. I must admit, Fraser says it's the first time he's been in a while to the Derby. Hibs have got that whole away end. So mm. that, that leads to a proper ever, atmosphere, doesn't it? I don't it? think I've ever done an Edinburgh Derby. Have you not? No. You're missing out. The atmosphere's always good. Although I must say, I went through a run of going to a few that were like really low, either low scoring or nil-nil. Yeah. And it sort of it tested a... my patience a bit, but the, the atmosphere's great. Yeah, I, I would imagine so, but uh, I, I still think we'll get a draw in the capital today. Uh, Fraser's there. I've not got good hopes. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. One thing that surprised me about the the game at St Mirren, I just paused there as Aberdeen were attacking. Um, I thought Michael Beale might have gave Lowry and Devine a start today. We chatted about how a lot of questions have been answered. You rightly pointed that out, Gordon, and people being given their chance, but. A couple of young players on the bench there that you're going to want to know if they're going to be part of your plans next season and they've just mm. not had the game time, especially when it is so meaningless, the game this afternoon. It's a perfect environment for them to go into, but they sit on the bench. What's the, what's the reasoning then? Is it because, with the best will in the world, because of how little is at stake and it is one game, you actually don't learn that much anyway? Like It, it becomes a... But surely it it's better, it's better to better than not do it. Better yeah, not doing it. You know, enough. if you're not going to learn that much, you're still going to see them in first team action against good players. So it's a surprise, but he's went with a, the majority of the tried and trusted players this afternoon. Strain has a potential strain, strain. off after six minutes. Marcus Fraser on for St Mirren. So that's not ideal. Maybe he's just got the flight booked. Oh yeah you know I mean he's thinking mm, he's heard The Badger the, Lounge he's heard, calls. he's heard the news Are there not delays At airports or something I'm sure I heard Before we came mm. on That's the best time Of the season early. For footballers When you're winding down is, You've is, got that Is the flight tonight Is that is that how you oh, used to quite, work it Quite occasionally yeah. yeah You'd be away Straight away Because remember <laughs> It's getting shorter and shorter Your break now So true. players only get Maybe sometimes Two weeks well, Three weeks If they're lucky Speaking to Callum McGregor Yesterday Think He'll not have a lot Scotland yeah. schedule Yeah he won't have a lot I think they'll, they'll be off For a bit Willie A few days And then straight back Into I mean, training Scot Scotland squad Gets announced on Monday For the upcoming qualifiers um, Don't get me wrong Celtic are in a slightly Better position now Because they don't have The early Club qualifiers, qualifiers For yeah. Europe But still um, Scotland have a busy schedule And some will get Next to no time off at all Yeah gone are the days Of two weeks in Magaluf After the season's finished was that, your, would you, was that you your destination of choice? Six weeks, yeah. seven weeks off though Would you yeah, not? Yeah, longer? we were we were incredible Was it just totally different? I mean, did you just Totally different Like, and did you come back fat? We'd a, yes. we, we, no, no, I was unhealthy. never uh, no, There was a few come back a little bit overweight Were I you not like that? No, no, I was me. I was very thin when I was a young <laughs> lad There were classic but, newspaper photographs Every, Really? Oh, people coming back stone and a half overweight Oh, uh, we, we were seven weeks now, seven weeks without training. To be fair, we were dedicated. I was very lucky as a young boy. Uh, I lived next to David Coote and we used to run around the Strathclyde Park a lot. That was our sort of a uh, routine. Stop for a shot in the dodgems. Yeah, <laughs> but nice when, I, when I went to Wraith, I got in beside guys that just professional did not come into oh, the, the category. Oh, they were sure. a disgrace. Um, and we used to hit the Magaluf Beach and... That was it. Oh, imagine oh, that. Imagine no, being on the no, Magaluf beach. Oh, the oh, boys come. Come. Quite frankly, I would rather not. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you. Oh. That was incredible times. <laughs> <laughs> it shows the difference, yeah, to the game that he played compared to what we're watching now. Look at these guys now. 
Oh, I thought anything. you were going to say it's now Dubai, not Magaluf. I thought that's the difference well, that's, that you that were. That is, you were you're slightly for. more up market. Listen, let me tell you, in my heyday, I would have wiped any of them at the bleep test. I was fantastic at the bleep you test. You think you'd beat Dyes and Maida at the bleep test? Ah, well, not take him out of the <laughs> no. So do you. I, I said Dame on the photograph there on the TV. I, I, Maida no, was maybe I, a wee I'd bit st- too much I'd for still, me. I'd still fancy Kyogo and his pals, Gordon. I must admit. Uh, you underestimate me. We've got one of these to tell you about. Yes. With Clyde Built Home Improvements. Hearts have struck first in the Edinburgh Derby. Hearts won Hibs nil, and it's Oda after eight minutes. That is exactly the start Stephen Naismith needed. Remember, a draw is enough to keep Hearts in fourth and prevent Hibs from overtaking them, but naturally they would rather win the game. And this gives them the exact start they were looking for. The home crowd will have enjoyed that one, Hugh. You can almost hear them from here. Well, of all the Japanese players we had uh, tipped to score first today, Oda <laughs> might not have been top of the list, but well done him. Uh, as Celtic through Kyogo and Hatati still look for the opener at Celtic Park. It's a great start for Stephen Naismith uh, and the Hearts players. Uh, Stephen Naismith, if there's to be any chance at all of getting the Hearts job, I think has to win this game. So he'll be a happy man. See the way things are going. I think that if he gets a good performance and a good result today, you look at the clubs, everyone's doing St Johnston, promoting within, Motherwell, promoting within. Um, there's one other, and Aberdeen. I don't know. Aberdeen. <laughs> pro- <laughs> I'm that boy right, right on the TV <laughs> in front of you. <laughs> that boy there, promoting within. <laughs> uh, so it's a sort of a trend just now. Um, and if he gets a good result and a good performance, you never know. Doesn't he always work, though? I mean, we were chatting earlier in the week about Dundee United, Jack Ross. Yeah. Promote within, Liam Fox didn't work at all. You could even say Motherwell. It didn't work the first time. The first time. But it's worked this time So it, it, It's a big decision What's he got to do with it? Promote it <laughs> within You've just added You've just was added Cathro Yeah uh, Yeah, you know, yeah uh, Hearts wasn't he? I don't know Was he there yeah, he had before? Do, uh, or was he not brought in as the, the no, manager? No no he was there with Craig Levine The coaching staff And he got the job And he had an absolute disaster Right, okay. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> I'm kidding. It's Cathro getting slammed for four <laughs> years ago. I hope he's not listening. Are you just talking about this season? I'm just talking about this season. Oh, but no, it's a I'm risky br- strategy. But look, the, the argument that it, it shouldn't work because they were there before, so no, they were was, part. He was, he was at Newcastle uh, before. I, 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 I thought I would check that, but you just seemed so convinced. What do you he's, mean? He's he's good never, at the line. He never managed. He was at Hearts. No, he. he, he he never managed until he went to Hearts. He was in the Hearts staff. He didn't come from Newcastle to Hearts. He was under. Yes, he cre- did. No, he did not. I was pretty sure he, <laughs> he was, was down <laughs> south and he came. He, he, was he, in, used, to, he used to be at Dundee United, United with Craig Levine. Craig Levine. Yeah. Aye. But right. he didn't get promoted within. Hold on. So did, they, <laughs> did he get the job in Newcastle? Yes. No, he did not. I'm questioning that. Right, listen. He I'm going to explain this to you very simply. I've got an article from Hearts official website. Right. Ian Cathro has signed a three and a half year deal with the Jambos. Skip a couple of lines. The 30 year old moves to Tynecastle from Newcastle United, <laughs> right. where he served as assistant coach. What are you talking about four years ago? We're <laughs> talking about up to date. Mark was right. Carry on, Mark. You're yeah, doing so good. You're your heads already. In it was because he went everywhere with Levine, won it? I just had this thing. You have to be certain that you're not promoting from within simply for economic reasons because you can't afford to bring in a new guy. So, all credit to Stuart Kettlewell. The job that he did for Motherwell was first class. Stephen McLean, I think, showed a bit of bravado by saying St Johnston will stay up and he made sure that he was the guy who kept them up. So uh, it remains to be seen what t- happens now that he is the full-time manager. But so long as you promote from within for the right reasons and that's what Stephen Naismith has to prove today that beating Hibs is that proof on its own that you can do this job. Yeah, I mean, and for what it's worth, he followed Nuno Espirito Santo about. It doesn't look that much like. No, he's movie. not but really. Anyway, let's let's just worried. leave it there. Um, let's check in on that teaser, Hugh. Remind us of the question. Since the summer of 2019, Celtic and Rangers have taken a combined eight players on loan from English Premier League clubs. Who are they? Mark Wilson, Gordon Dale. Have you started? Uh, I, 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 I think we've got half of them. I've sort of switched Maybe. off. Have they, Hugh? For the avoidance of doubt, those clubs were and still are English Premier League clubs. I mean, some of them might change and 
a week, if that makes sense to you. But they're, they're still English Premier oh, League clubs. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Okay, Mark's given me four, one of which is correct. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> really? Some, some wrong ones, Hugh. I think Sean may have fallen victim to the time frame here. He's gone for Patrick Roberts. Oh, Paddy Roberts, I don't think was still there in 2019, was oh, he? Well, he, he came before that, that, didn't he? That would be the problem. So no, Patrick Roberts. But do you know what? Most people are. Are getting there or thereabouts I have to say Um, But that would be one that sticks out As a wrong answer Derek FM's giving it a good go Barry's throwing a couple of names in Mikey Okay Mikey's gone for Moritz Bauer Not there The championship he came from I think at the time from Stoke So there we go Keep them coming in please Curtis Main over the bar from distance And very much End of season stuff in Paisley. Uh, I'm afraid to tell you, bad clash of heads. And I tell you what, mm. you never like to see this with any player, but particularly Peter Haring. Peter Haring oh, was out for yeah. months with a concussion this season, and uh, he's come off worst again with Jake Doyle Hayes, Hugh, and yeah. those are they're a real worry. You know, football still trying to get to grips with those things, and like I said, he, Haring actually. Missed a long, long spell with a head knock this season, well, and now it looks like he's struggling again. You know, Stephen Naismith has a, a duty of care to the players. Uh, Hearts Football Club have a duty of care. So, if there's any dubiety about Peter Haring, then they should take him off. Uh, but clearly, that game is not end of season because it's the Edinburgh Derby, and they are both giving it their best shot. And this game at Celtic Park, you would think that the two of them were going for the title on the last day. It's it's. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Better performance from Celtic than you have seen this side of the split. Uh, even Abada, on the occasion of his 100th game, uh, is as exciting as he has ever looked. Uh, Peter Haring's still down, unfortunately. It doesn't yeah. sound good. It's got to um, take him off. No, yeah, yeah, you can't take the risk with that, particularly when it is Haring and that earlier concussion. There was reports that they just couldn't get it right, even when he was what back was in the gym training. It just wasn't right and took a long time so why take the risk mm. I know there's a lot on the line for Hearts but not worth the can bring the on the wig but, oh, <laughs> aye, aye, what aye. about the afro on him honestly yeah aye. bring on the wig that's where they'll the be afro. singing it's remarkable <sighs> he's bad out he'll be he's, roasting he's... they'll be roasting today with I know, that, I know. <laughs> can you imagine <laughs> So he's getting cold. Oh, yeah, he's gone off Peter Haring, so quite right. Hopefully he um has a speedy recovery. Keel has come on. It is not the wig he's had to wait, so <laughs> yes. we'll wait and see. Matt O'Reilly, dangerous ball in. He has certainly last time I checked the most assists in the league this season, unless that's recently changed. It's not often you would expect directly from a corner to find the head of Kyogo, who actually did quite well <laughs> physically to get there, but um, the header was all wrong and goes high over the top. I was going to say, if uh, you lose a goal to a corner and a header of Kyogo when <laughs> you've got so many of the centre halves in there, you'd be highly disappointed. Yeah. And, and especially Aberdeen's. Centre back recruits in January have made such a difference, haven't they? Been good. Yeah. I, th- I think that's what uh, impressed the Aberdeen board. I thought Barry Robson brought in some good players. Uh, obviously, bringing Shinny back to clubs a, a big boost as well. Captain there, he's been terrific. Um, and I kept going back to it. his first his first decision was to get rid of his captain. Oh. Uh, it was the captain under Jim Goodwin, uh, Stuart. He put him out of the club within days. Um, so. Barry showed good leadership, good strength, and uh, deserves a position. I suppose that all happened so quickly. So I, I can't remember the exact time frame, but maybe a couple of those moves were in the pipeline anyway. I think yeah, they were. It's always yeah, important yeah, to yeah. remember that. Um, incidentally, just since you mentioned it, Anthony Stewart, MK Dons, he went to, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. New manager of MK Dons. Yeah. Graham Alexander, Vander. former oh. Motherwell manager. Oh. So there you go. All Saints will be delighted. He'll be, their sales will go up. Ah, he loves, <laughs> he loves, loves Saints, that, doesn't he? Up, doesn't he? Yeah, wonder if he's still sporting them just I would I would guess so full catalogue for there wonderful stadium they have down there in MK. it's a nice stadium isn't it yeah, I played there for Celtic one time Hugh unfortunately yeah. it was in a in Europe. a reserve game <laughs> that I, I tell you who else played in it the man who's managing Robson aye Aberdeen today the two of us were coming back for injury and we got sent with the kids down to MK Dons how was it uh, that was a long Memorable. afternoon Long afternoon We were chatting about Going down to London In the morning Just recently Flying back mm. We did that How that careers day. go In different pathways 
Aye, aye. Is this what Barry's at to be in here? Then, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Barry would be <laughs> desperate to be in here. Um, did the was this one of the games that you took James Forrest under your wing and, and made I him into the Celtic I legend? Probably that he is been. Now? That was, I mean, in James, he had a, a great relationship, and it was only through that he got his chance. So he's got a lot to thank me about. I can imagine. Um, Alistair Johnson plays a long ball over the top that Aberdeen defend really, really well. By the way, they have done from for Hayes. the first 21 minutes of this game. Celtic have tried that probably about four times, trying to slip it inside Johnny Hayes like they're mm-hmm. so good at. He's read it terrifically well. It helps that he's still extremely quick. He is, isn't he? And I mean, what age is he? A man of his vintage. 30, 34, maybe, or something I'm like that. I'm sure I read that he is the fittest at the club with yeah, the blood test. Yeah. Uh, but I'll tell you another thing if you're Celtic and along there today, great to see AG back. Um, he was a big miss for him And obviously looking forward to a cup final tomorrow yeah, yeah, that, yeah, is exactly. that, is, that is big Because we knew Carter Vickers' season was over Hugh But I don't think you'll meet And there's that long ball again And Celtic do get on the end And it's brilliantly oh, defended well again, again From yeah. Jack McKenzie And does, did they get the goal kick? Does it come back off? I, th- I, uh, think I, I thought it came back off Hitati there McKenzie does brilliant though Is it something that has... Well, I'd like to think it hasn't gone unnoticed because we're in game 38 of 38. But actually, for all the the clever possession play Celtic, it feels like this season that's been the bit they've they've maybe added to last season. They go direct quite a lot. Yeah, we maybe in this we, we fall into the trap of thinking direct means that you just aimlessly hoof the ball up the pitch. But obviously there are other ways of doing it And it feels like they do it quite a bit Well, They've obviously worked on it a lot Because you look at what goes on Just in front of a back four To make those spaces And of course you need a front man Or a wide man To be unselfish and make the run They've got both They've got Kyogo And they've got Abada And they've got whoever else on the other side Maeda or Jota But that time it was Hitati So Hitati comes short and then runs in behind So you need players with legs Willing to make the run Then you need the quality pass But they've certainly worked on it all season They've got so much joy from it And not just at this level Against the big sides as well How much joy will they get against Inverness Cali Thistle Who haven't played a competitive match for a month What have they been up to for the past month? Magaluf (laughs) Yeah Yeah. Well there'll be a certainty next week let me tell you but yeah. Actually someone's very helpfully sent me the official NHS guidance on sunburn oh. The first piece of advice is genius mm-hmm. Get out of the sun as soon as possible uh-huh. uh, Right, you've got uh, that one I feel that test Cool your skin with a cool shower mm-hmm. mm. Bit impossible in here Apply after sun I was hoping for some, yeah, aloe some vera. tricks here Any oh, aloe What vera? a save from Kellerus in the Aberdeen goal There were many people out there <laughs> Who questioned the professionals of Scotland And thought that maybe Kelleroos had been hard done by To be left out of team of the year And that's a brilliant save It was a corner from Celtic I was waiting on the header Ending up in the bottom corner But he goes full stretch Palms it away And the rebound comes to nothing Gordon Banks Comes to mind Oh that's steady the... Oh you're steady. getting all that <laughs> Get something on his sun. face ah, the Aye. Sun. <laughs> He's got sunstroke Oh well Wait, wait <laughs> oh, till you see it banks. again Then you come yeah, well, It doesn't tip it over You need the trademark oh. Tip over the bar don't you But anyway It was it was a good save I think we can all agree Can't we I, yeah. I give the man some positive Description I know it's not yeah. like you I think we're shot And I'm shot down in flames So from now on I'm going back to get the cloak on The Grim Reaper it returns The face is in flames That's for sure uh, <laughs> As Leo Labada tries to build I think it's quite an interesting game Gordon in the sense that you, Because Celtic get into every game favourites You're conditioned to think That if Celtic aren't leading It's because they're playing badly And they're not at all And it's an, it's an interesting battle Because Celtic are playing pretty well And Aberdeen are defending really well And we've just not had the breakthrough yet Well I'm sure Andrew at the stadium will agree I've really enjoyed the first 25 minutes I think the the movement from Celtic has been excellent But the organisation from Aberdeen has been brilliant they, they really have There's a save there Gordon Banks I would leave Banks out and just go Gordon <laughs> um, But Celtic are the ones that are dominating the game But when you go to Celtic Park You know they've got to defend at times And Aberdeen are certainly doing that And uh, they're doing it very well yeah, 26 gone, Celtic nil, Aberdeen nil Definitely Celtic with all of the attacking intent you would have to say um, Maybe Aberdeen managed to get up the pitch a few times early on But those are becoming few and far between as this one progresses Let's go the teaser again, Hugh, just remind us one more I'll keep mentioning it to see if we can get 
a full house I don't think we've even got anyone on the podium yet Since the summer oh, of do, 2019 Celtic and Rangers have taken a combined Eight players on loan From English Premier League clubs Name them Yeah remember no more it's Bauer That was Stokes I can see oh, people what a goal <laughs> Oh there we are Just as I was reading the answers to the teaser Goal flashes with Clyde Built Home Improvements Celtic 1, Aberdeen 0 And something fitting on this final day of the season It's the man that's carried the most of the goal threat throughout the campaign It is Kyogo And we've got another one as well Goal Flashes With Clyde Built Home Improvements Simmer 0, Rangers 1 And Fashion Sakala gives Michael Beale's side the lead Fed by Yilmaz And uh, both of them There we go What's that old saying about Glasgow buses or whatever you, you, you wait for one and then two come along at the same time Indeed, let's do Celtic's first Mark Wilson because this man has had some season Oh, tremendous I mean he, he spots the space in behind and fed in by Greg Taylor but he's got the composure then to check back he understands he's got two Aberdeen players going to shut the shot down when his right foot comes in on his left reverses past the goalkeeper into top corner terrific goal Stunning Absolutely stunning um, When it goes to I'm thinking he's got to try and Let it go across his body He just checks He's still got a lot to do Because the goalkeeper is in terrific form Unstoppable That is absolutely brilliant There's another contest going on this weekend of course And that is to find the league's top yep. goal scorer Kyogo strengthens his lead at the front He now two ahead uh, Lauren Shankland And Van Veen's in there as well So uh, it, it's great to find the goal scorers in such form Yeah, and uh, someone told me Someone close to it all That he actually is very, very passionate About being the top scorer in Scotland this season Apparently he was very excited about this weekend Because he really, really You know, some players are a bit Just depends your style yeah. Some say, ah, you know, I don't mind It's all about the team and oh, that. Oh, oh, the Strikers are, yeah Yeah, I, I, I even like him better for that but I, like I, I think he was hard done by last season because he was mm. he, he was in the run and then he got injured, so he missed a large portion. Well, you saw the goal celebration with the best will in the world. It's not the most you know important goal, but he was absolutely delighted yeah, with yeah. that, wasn't he? Okay, penalty check for a Hibs spot kick. So Cadden fouled by Cochrane. I think the question is: is it inside the area or not? So remember, this is not one. Just to continue our education together This is not one the referee would go and ask To check the monitor Right, because it's supposed to be factual It's either inside the box or it's not So he's presumably, if I've picked it up right He's made the call, it is a foul And then VAR is going to tell him whether it was in the box or not So that's Fair enough So there will be no yeah. monitor It's a bit like offside You don't get refs going over to just see If a player's on or offside So it's supposed mm. to be a factual decision But we'll find out And um the wait goes on Fraser Wisher You know Fraser loves VR, Doesn't he yeah. He's our biggest supporter of it Ask him what he thinks So we'll uh, We'll see Come on text and Tell us what you think Fraser <laughs> He says it looked inside to him Oh, oh, him. oh He's put his neck oh, in the line there oh. oh hold on Now the ref, the ref is going to the monitor <laughs> oh. So you'd have to assume There's another Consideration there It won't all be about Whether it's in or outside the box So Maybe going to so what does this mean then? Is he going to overturn his decision that it was a foul? Presumably. Because usually when they go to the monitor, it's, it's, to, it. it's to reverse it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll see. It's interesting though because it's such a big decision. What hinging on that game? Yeah, absolutely. So we'll keep you up to speed. Rangers and Celtic both scoring, I think, pretty much the same time. I haven't actually checked to see who got in there first. Not that it matters. And Gordon, you know, talking about Kyogo, it's an entirely different Scenario for Rangers attackers where they've been searching for that solution, but that is Sakala up to eleven for the season, where he joins the likes of Alfredo Morelos and Kevin Nisbet and Jota. Um, you know, goes one ahead of Lila Bada and Mark O'Hara. So we always talk about numbers. I know mm. he's not everyone's cup of tea. He's had a good return, but he's done well, hasn't he? He's had a good return, Gordon. He's a he's a confidence player for me. See if Michael Beale can get players round about him, get his confidence sky high. He's a threat. He's got good pace. Um, yes, there are times when he can kick the ball out of the pitch and you don't know what he's doing, but um, he can get goals. And he's shown that. And, and it's just a confidence player for... And if you get him in the right frame of mind, he is a real threat, Sakala. He's finishing the season a high. 
So it will be interesting mm. how Michael Beale's got to fit him into the plans next season. Ah, so it was not again. It's like a rerun. I was checking to see if this tweet was from a couple of weeks ago. So after a VAR check for a red card that was for denying the goal scoring opportunity. So that's the bit. Alex Cochran oh, has dope. been sent off again for Hearts. Wow. Goal flashes with Clyde Mills Home Improvements. Celtic 2, Aberdeen 0, and it's Kyogo again, Mark Wilson. Well, tremendous, re- a totally different for his first goal this time, was a, a shot at the edge of the box, I think it was Callum McGregor, but spilled by Roos, and who's the first man on site, it's Kyogo, does what any good striker does, anticipates, thinks the goalkeeper's going to spill it, and he does, Aberdeen defence, left static, he tucks it away again. It just shows you you can change your opinion very quickly. We praised the goalkeeper. Yeah, one minute we you're Gordon the Banks, def- the yeah. next minute you're Gordon Deal. Yeah, you praised <laughs> the defence and uh, Celtic have just, it's too easy. Once that ball comes in, goalkeeper spills it. <laughs> oh, dear. He, he, that is entirely my fault for saying that people were uh, bigging him up for team of yeah. the season. Um, but they all switch off apart from one man. Q goes on to it. And uh, he buries it Right Big Big turn of events In that Edinburgh derby So The check Was to see if it was a go- Denying an obvious Goal scoring opportunity Now remember If that's inside the box And it's a genuine attempt To play the ball It won't be A red card But the decision was taken That it was outside the box Which means Alex Cochran Is sent off And then Kevin Nisbet Takes the free kick Goal flashes mm. With Clyde Bills Home improvements and he scores the free kick. Oh. So it is one all in the Edinburgh Derby and hearts are down to 10 men. It was only a couple of weeks ago Alex Cochran was sent off for denying an obvious goal-scoring opportunity against Celtic, wasn't it? And it's happened again. What a turn of events, Hugh, because advantage Hibs now to go on and win this and leapfrog their Edinburgh rivals. The original double whammy. You lose one of your best players and you lose the equalising goal at the same time. So... Uh, I can imagine Stephen Naismith's reaction on the touchline But it's happened, it's over and done with And Hearts will need to get on with it As Kyogo tries very hard for his hat-trick That's a man that's desperate to get a hat-trick yeah. And oh. uh, finish top scorer in the league His teammates are looking at him as if to Abada say Abada knows that if he squares the ball to him It's a tap-in for Abada But he doesn't No, no. So he's 27 goals for the season Kyogo Van Veen and uh, Lon Shanklin both on 24 yeah, it's looking likely. Uh, Mark, that's incredible, that Edinburgh derby, because obviously yeah. they did the right thing. I know football lawmakers don't always get it right, but they did the right thing to try and take away that double jeopardy of if you sort of accidentally deny an obvious goal-scoring opportunity in the box, you don't get hit with the penalty and the red card. Mm-hmm. If it's outside the box, you still get the red card. And where that falls down is if the player buries the free kick. Yeah, Because in this scenario... Hearts would rather have had the penalty. Yeah, yeah, of course, and still, <laughs> and still been equal in men. men. Of course, so, you know, a, a terrible few minutes from a Hearts point of view, but Kevin Nisbet, what a player. He has suffered injuries throughout the season, but has shown that he can weak the line, he can score penalties, but also free kicks, he can tuck them away. He's, finished, no he's finished the season on a high. Well, um, here, here's the thing, right, about Kevin Nisbet, because I mentioned earlier, I was just rhyming off goal totals, I think, in comparison with... Sakala that's Kevin Nisbet up to 12 goals for the season in 18 appearances great yeah. that's, a, that's an excellent return this mm. might also be his last game in a Hibs jersey well because mm. there's talk again of a uh, Millwall coming back in for him and uh, Celtic looking to throw oh, a thumb here. Celtic look hungry that, oh, oh what a clearance that is <laughs> That is the defender's McDonald. equivalent of a 30 yard screamer into the top corner. Jota was through, he lifted the ball over the goalkeeper, and McDonald races back. I think Jota was offside anyway, yeah. in yeah. truth. But don't let Angus McDonald hear that because oh. that was a brilliant clearance off the line. Oh, incredible. Oh, well, once again for Celtic, incredible. The movement, Jota knows exactly where to run, he gets in behind. It's a great oh. dinked finish. But that's as good a clearance as you'll see. I know it's offside, it would but have been offside, McDonald, wouldn't it? Mm. McDonald didn't know that. He still yeah, had to get back there. Free kick to it's a terrific Aberdeen game. anyway. Terrific you game. have to say, Gordon, why why stop the habit of a lifetime now in the last day of the season? Let's keep using the cliches about how goals change games because Celtic now look like they could kick on and win this by anything. Yeah, I think the, the last three games have sorted, and especially at Easter Road, 
You know, the managers come out, taking a lot of responsibility on his shoulders, probably sat down, had a chat with his players and said, look, let's go out here today, massive crowd, massive occasion, and show everybody what we're all about. And they've certainly, so far, 36 minutes, they've lived up to that because they've been excellent. Their movement, the way they're moving the ball about, their rotations, everything about them, the goals, Kyogo's first goals, exceptional. But Celtic really looking fire. The pace that they're playing at, you know, back to what it was at the start of the season. I'm watching Joe Hart. When the ball goes out to play, the ball boys are throwing Joe Hart the ball practically before the ball's even over the line. He's taking the goal kick right away. That's driven for the manager. I think that's right. The manager would have said, come on, let's let's just mm. up the standards again to what we're used to. Rangers player's not happy because Curtis Main was booked for a hefty challenge on Robbie McCrory and then just after he was penalised for a foul on Suter. Doesn't mean they were both yellows, but when that happens, yeah, opposition players are very mm. quick to sort of remind the referee. So Curtis Main might be on a bit of a tightrope, and yeah. since it is that time, maybe his last game in a St Mirren yeah. shirt. Well, I mean the way he it looks like it's yeah, it will be the yeah. way he terrorised Celtic at Celtic Park, scored two goals, could have been three, four. Um, he's a top class nuisance up front. Uh, he's been a good player from here. Yeah. Leaves the club uh, Obviously stand named after him Oh dear Have oh, <laughs> you been working up to that? Have you been working up to that this season? It's a bit of a lucky way to get that one out. That's a good way to finish I'm going to do, so- I'm gonna do yeah. something I would rarely do Since it's the end of the season That's not bad for me uh, I, I quite like that Oh it's only taking you 30 to 8 weeks But I'm <laughs> happy with that I was just hoping that When you finish You weren't going to butt in Because I'd have lost my moment It's all about well timing so, <laughs> it's, it's all about timing Well done Brilliant so happy. Can't, can't follow that really yeah. um, Rio Hitati was another nice Celtic move Hitati was brought down Free kick Celtic But it was it was probably right on the cusp of Acceptable shooting distance Celtic tried a delicate ball to the back post And it didn't really work out, Hugh No, but uh, they are back to their thrilling best today As if the last three games never happened uh, Individual performances Alistair Johnson You can see what he gives to this side Kyogo, fantastic uh, All over the park Katati's really enjoying himself uh, the, the fans who were there I think Ange Postacoglu's instruction Would have been Entertain there's 60,000 We're going to get a trophy At the end of it Entertain And they have them mm. I, th- I only, think a big on, on your, your great joke there, there is only one man In the team quicker than you though And it's Roger Hanna And he's been in touch To say that Thank goodness Any of his uh, former clubs Didn't name an end After Cammy Bell But anyway It's 39 <laughs> minutes gone Celtic 2 Aberdeen 0 uh, Rangers are in front Against St Mirren And we are level Hearts against Hibs But Hearts are down To 10 men Well we said that uh, you know, coming in, you're wondering what you're going to get this afternoon. The sun is shining. We're getting great football. We're getting goals. We're getting excitement. What else can you ask for on a Saturday afternoon, last league uh, games of the season? An outdoor show. That's what I'd ask for. Right. That would be no, good. no, no, no. I'm not sure one to come in here with shorts together. on today. I know. Um, that is disturbing know, dis- Seeing his legs Aye, They're not the best. I need, not. To bor- I need to borrow somebody's Did you ever legs. run as weird. a footballer? No, I don't do squats either, no, as you know. I've got legs like pole limits. <laughs> what, what, what do you mean did I run? I was uh, I was lightning. But I just feel like most footballers, you, you get, can tell get... that they used the legs as part of their job. I know, there's nothing there either. I've, I, 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 look, I've tried everything. I've tried absolutely everything, but it just it's built for speed. That's mm. all it is. I'm not a chunky. We can't do an outdoor show. I, I no, need no, to wear a balaclava. <laughs> no, you're right. You're in. You're in bother. You're in deep trouble. I must say. Uh, anyway, right. Have we got any other action to tell you about? Not yet. Sakala with that goal. I'll give you. Let's go. Where are we? One more reminder of the teaser, Hugh, and I'll do the podium in a couple of minutes if we can. Yeah. Since the summer of 2019, Celtic and Rangers have taken a combined eight players on loan from English Premier League clubs. Who are they? So remember, those clubs were and still are Premier League clubs. That doesn't mean to say they might not be come August, just to give you a clue on a couple of them. Some really tricky ones in there, I must admit. But most of the responses, I would say, are there or thereabouts, I have to say. I'm impressed. I am impressed with the standard. Um, So I'll announce just in a minute or two who has won those. 
Uh, Celtic corner far side so out swinger from Matt O'Reilly delivery pretty good but ha- um, Hearts Aberdeen have bodies in the right area and clear it away and uh, they're on a bit of a counter attack we've not seen anything really of Aberdeen in an attacking sense and oh. ooh, Carl Starfelt we got to be a foul, surely. Yeah, yeah it's a free kick. I yeah. tell you what, he's. Yeah, it's got to be a card as well. It's never going to be more than a yellow, but he's. If the angle was a touch different, he's maybe in a bit of bother because, um, like I say, he's. He's well, heading Watkins to the corner away. flag. But See, he's originally he does brilliant defending because he's 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 putting Watkins away from the goals all the time, and much quicker than he. I, I, I don't start looks, there. Yeah, yeah. Wat- Watkins can shift. He's oh. a strong lad as well. Uh, as Marlon Walken but he just got himself too tight there knew Watkins was in danger of skipping by him just pulled him back yellow card right decision first test now of uh, Starfield Iwata uh, as this ball comes in Celtic haven't been tested defensively at all in this first no. half because they've been so brilliant going forward but this is a real test of them now uh, yeah Leighton Clarkson's had a brilliant season for Aberdeen and it's a great ball in and a bit of Pinball off two Celtic players' heads, I think. It's a great header, is it? Arster Johnson yeah, it yeah. gets the first contact on it just to divert it away from goal because it's a good ball and they're a dangerous area. Just diverts it away. Good defending. I think you can see a marked difference from the two fullbacks this afternoon for Celtic. Johnson always looking to go forward, looks comfortable in the ball, getting in the final third, and then Greg Taylor on the other side, who's been terrific once again, sets up Kyogo for the first goal, but always comfortable. Coming into that midfield area and picking wee passes through, you can see the difference. Can't, dis- can't disagree with that. Uh, if you look at that Celtic stand 11 today, it shows you how serious uh, Postacoglu is taking this because you would argue Carter Vickers, yeah, he would be a mainstay in there. Maeda or Abada, probably Maeda. Suspension. So it's two, and he can't. he's not got the luxury of playing the two. Mm. Um, so it's a very strong, but I agree with Mark. I think the difference in the full back areas are enormous. And it, you know end the season might not have seemed that important at the time but just a bit of frustration maybe Mark for Dyson Maida so he'll serve a suspension today Abada's been pretty good yeah. does Abada then keep the place does Dyson Maida miss out in the Scottish Cup final because you know of a, a sort of daft well, sending uh, off at Easter Road don't get me wrong Ange Postacoglu makes subs and all that stuff he'll, he'll be involved for sure Yeah. But, well we're approaching half time here if we're going in form and what we've seen then you would say Abada probably should and deserves to be in the starting lineup next year. But if you're going for favourites of the manager and big games and big occasions, Maeda always mm. comes in. So if you're Maeda, you're probably thinking along those lines that manager likes me, I'll be, well, I'll be back in. He's the Cali Thistle players will never have come up against anything like Dyson Maeda. Uh, he on his own would terrify them next week. A bad is just the typical one. You get the opportunity before a Scottish Cup final and you're giving it everything. But I agree. I think that Postacol Glue likes Maida and I think Ham- he's... Happened to me. Dundee United against uh, Celtic. Celtic Park. I was given the opportunity the week before. Played right back. Did well. <laughs> Scottish Cup final the next week at Celtic Park St. Johnson. Who was it? Jack- Jackie McNamara left you? Jackie, Jackie left me on the bench for it- Keith Watson. Yeah. Oh, right. Well, Keith's a good player. <laughs> hey, a very good player. United's yeah. gone and win that final though and, and vindicate the decision. No, no she's exactly. 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 I was only like to bring it to me, right? Remember? Aye. Do you think I'm actually questioning <laughs> who won it? <laughs> right, okay. uh, Give uh, me a bit he was, more. He was trying to set me up to uh, say it. Uh, should have played him. He should have played me. Thanks, Gordon. You see, he's peaked at main stand. Yeah, yeah, it's all downhill from there, yeah. isn't it? He's gone. Oh. I must say. I'll do the podium of the teaser winners at the half time interval. That's what we'll do, just in case we get any late goals. I'm fascinated now by this Edinburgh Derby, as if I wasn't before. Because remember, as it stands, this is enough for hearts. Uh huh. Can you dig in with your 10 men and, mm. and hold out for that draw for what will probably be about an hour when it's all said and I done? I think there'll be more goals and drama in Edinburgh. I don't think we're done there. Well, Hibs know how to play against 10 men. They've got it in, what, three days within space? Three days? Celtic on the Wednesday mm. and now Hearts down. So they'll have worked on it. I just mean in terms of Mark knowing that the draw's fine for you, mm. how that changes your approach if your Hearts. Well, I don't think I would have at the start of the day, but now that you're down to 10 men, then... You know, you've got to 
you know, obviously play more defensive minded. I don't see them throwing bodies forward. Shanklin already plays in that deeper role, but it's when it gets nearer the end of the game and all of a sudden that ball becomes a magnet to your own goal. It's going to be difficult. That's where you really find out the characters in your team. So, big, a big half, second half coming up for Stephen Naismith's side and for him personally. Yeah, his job going forward Looking forward to hearing from Fraser at half time Which is not too far away Two minutes added on at Celtic Park Similar story in Paisley Where Rangers reads lead Easy for me to say St Mirren By that fashion Sakala goal to nil And real drama in the Edinburgh Derby Level on the scoreboard But not on the head count Because Alex Cochran for the second time in a few weeks Has been sent off at Tynecastle In a big game for denying an obvious goal scoring opportunity Fraser Wisher, I can almost sense the rage as he passes this message along to me. Seven minutes added in wow. the first half at Tynecastle. Fraser well, must have played in a few Edinburgh derbies, you know? Yeah, I wonder if he's... He'd never played seven minutes exact. added on. He couldn't have thrown the ball in that long. Was that season high at Fir Park last week with Malky Mackay? Was it, was it 12, 12 in the end? Yeah. We can't have been more than that, surely. No. That's incredible. Well, the World Cup, we've seen it in the World Cup, but not in our league. Yeah, but we're course. not that I don't even think that's why. Because in the World Cup, remember, there was a real effort to om- to almost properly count up the stoppages, you know, sort of every time the ball went dead. But I don't think we're doing that. I think this yeah, is ju- this is just, just for VAR checks yeah. and subs anyway. Half time, Celtic Park, Andrew McLean. Celtic 2, Aberdeen 0, the half-time score and probably fitting. Kyogo is the man making the difference for the champions so far today. And Postacoglu's side, well, they came out to an incredible display, didn't they? That seemed to give the players a lift as well. Quick passing, loads of possession, looked really sharp. But only half chances, really, in the opening stages of the game. Kyogo and McGregor dragging shots wide. You expected a goal to come, and no surprise, it was Kyogo who grabbed it 27 minutes in. Greg Taylor with a pass to find Kyogo in the box. It was a smart turn back onto his left, and he found in the top corner with his shot to open the scoring. He got his second five minutes later. Callum McGregor shot from the edge of the box was saved by Kel Roos, but he could only palm it into the path of Kyogo, who was making that run into the box, and he found the back of the net. That's now 33 for the season for the Japanese striker. He was keen for his hat trick. A minute later, he fired just over from a tight angle and then Angus McDonald also had to make an incredible goal line clearance to deny Jota but the winger turned out to be offside so it wouldn't have counted anyway Celtic on course for a winning end to this title winning campaign the half time score at Celtic Park is Celtic 2 Aberdeen 0 and it's also half time in Paisley so let's speak to Roger Hanna yeah half time St Mirren 0 Rangers 1 Fashion Sakala's goal midway through the half the difference between the sides here bad start for St Mirren the lost range in the right wing back after just six minutes didn't really seem to be any contact he just sat down down in the near the corner flag off and Marcus Fraser on it was a real slow burner here Fashi Sakala firing high over the top at one end Curtis Main high over the top at the other end but there was a bit of quality after 26 minutes with Van Yilmaz freeing Sakala in the inside left channel he cut inside of his right foot but past two or three Saints defenders and in a powerful close range shot which Scott Tanzer just couldn't keep out on the line for an 11th goal of the season for the Zambian International He was cut down in his prime there, Roger Hanna. I was enjoying it. And he'll still be talking. That's the thing. If you're at Paisley listening, just look for the guy that's talking. He's not talking to anyone because we can't hear him anymore. Uh, But we did get the Fashion Sakala goal update just about in there. He's the difference between the sides so far. I'll try and get Roger Hanna. I mean, he's presumably still talking. I can't hear him. One foot just before the break against Sakala, who has been a live wire up front, again cutting in from the left, this time dragging a shot wide at the near post. This very much low key end of season stuff. But Rangers ahead, St. Mirren nil, Rangers won. <laughs> That's like picking up a book, <laughs> ripping out the middle 50 pages and only getting the beginning and the end. And presumably he's blissfully unaware that yeah. we lost a big chunk in the middle. Rangers lead by a fashion Sakala goal to nil. It's end of season stuff. That's all you need. Yeah, yeah. pretty unsurprising. Was Roger there He kept talking Nobody was listening He kept going yeah, But he wouldn't know <laughs> No difference <laughs> to any other week <laughs> <laughs> Anyway uh, I think what we should Maybe do actually Let's stagger it a bit Because there's such a delay Let's get the half time picture From the Edinburgh Derby next Clyde One Super Scoreboard With Call Robert Accident Repair Fault and non-fault Insurance Specialist Robert will even Pay your excess Clyde One Super Scoreboard Podcast with Lucas Jaguar. 
Approved used Jaguar I-Pace now available with up to £3,800 deposit contribution plus a complimentary smart home charger, two years approved used warranty and more worth £1,500. One thing we can all agree on, no one wants another energy crisis. But just talking about it won't make it go away. Here's what we're actually doing at British Gas. We're increasing the UK's gas storage so that we can help make energy prices more predictable for everyone. And so the 7.5 million homes and businesses who rely on us for their energy today can rely on us tomorrow too. That's enough talking. Let's get on with the doing. British Gas. Clyde One Super Scoreboard Podcast with Lucas Land Rover. If you're selling, they're buying. Get an accurate valuation on your Land Rover. Contact Lucas today. The team with the biggest support in Glasgow and the West. This is Clyde One Super Scoreboard. It is finally half time in the Edinburgh Derby, so let's get the story there with Fraser Wishart. It is Hearts 1, Hibernian 1, not a classic, not a lot of great flowing football, but it's been a great watch as these games often are. Hearts are the opener by Utara Oda early on, and they were on top for most of the game. Then it turned on 28 minutes when Alex Cochran, the Hearts defender, was red carded after a VAR check, and Kevin Nisbet drove the subsequent free kick into the net. A goal that gave Hibs a real lift, and they have dominated the game now from then on as always a frantic start to the game Lauren Shanklin spoken to in 10 seconds for a needless foul on Lewis Miller near his own corner flag but the first chance came in the 7th minute when Will Fish got his head to a loose ball from a corner couldn't get any power in it and it was saved comfortably by Xander Clark and the opening goal for the home side came a couple of minutes later Hibs couldn't clear a long throw in from James Hill it was headed to the edge of the box great touch by Yutara Oda and the Japanese winger fired low into the net with his left foot right into the corner of the net a really good finish by the winger Hearts fans now in full voice they knew that Hibs needed two goals and a real bad clash of heads a bad instant between Peter Haring and Jake Doyle Hayes Haring came off worse and had to come off and he was subbed by Keogh but overall pretty scrappy game Hearts pretty comfortable football wise plenty of effort lots of challenges by both sides but no flow to the game Two yellow cards, one for Stevenson, Jake Doyle, Hayes, book for Phil, plenty of stoppages. Then came that instant, 28 minutes, the game turned on its head. Alex Cochran tackled Chris Cadden as he burst onto a loose ball on the edge of the box. Don Robinson gave a penalty, yellow carded Cochran, and after a long VAR check, he went to his monitor, Don Robertson, overturned the penalty kick, gave the free kick on the edge of the box. Of course, that meant that Cochran's yellow card became a red as he was denying a goal-scoring opportunity outside of the box. Three minutes after the incident, Kevin Nisbet quite calmly drilled the free kick low into the net. I think Hearts would rather have had the penalty and 11 players on the park. Paul Hanlon then tried his luck from distance. Good save by Clark. Got a hand to it to push it over. And Hibs fans, in full voice, Hearts rocked. They brought on Civic from Mackay to strengthen their back four with 10 men. And took a while for them to get back into the game at all. A couple of darting runs by Ginelli's crosses were cleared from the six-yard box. But it was Hibs who almost took the lead as we approached the break. Xander Clark touched a Newell shot from 10 yards over the bar and from that corner Newell swung it into the back post Lewis Miller the big right back the big Australian came in to meet the ball free header and he headed the ball wide from 6 yards it was an absolute sitter and he had his head in his hands because he knew he should have put Hibs ahead just before the break so as it stands Hearts hang on to 4th place but can they hang on to this result with 10 men Hibs on the front foot Fans around me subdued and a bit worried. Hibs fans to my right making plenty of noise. An exciting 45 minutes ahead here at Tyne Castle. It's Hearts 1, Hibernian 1. That is going to be a blockbuster second half. Let's round off our first half teaser before we move on any further. The first half teaser. With the Scottish Sun.co.uk slash football. For the best football news and opinion online. Since the summer of 2019, Celtic and Rangers have taken a combined eight players on loan from English Premier League clubs. They are Ahmad Diallo, Shea Ojo, Andy King, Cameron Carter Vickers, Mohamed El Yunusi, Shane Duffy, John Joe Kenny, and Fraser Forster. Well done if you got them all. Actually, Mark Wilson and Gordon Deal did not too badly, I have to say. Your namesake as well Gordon Eleven Was in third place On the podium Well done to Gordon Paul Don Was second fastest But the winner Was the man who sends us Teasers during the week The crazy pony Pony. He was on Twitter And he's won the teaser As well We've got a good Who am I Later on in the show That's you for the first half Let's try and go back To Celtic Park Andrew What's the 
What's the occasion like? What's the mood like? Because sometimes, even though it's trophy day, it can still have an end of season. I feel from our distance, it doesn't look like the game feels that way, though. It does a wee bit at times. I mean, Celtic have been, you know, very good. They've played their sort of fast-flowing football. They've been, you know, impressive at times. There's maybe not been quite the competitive edge that you'd expect in a game where both teams are fighting for league places, but there certainly still has been a lot of quality here as well. That's not lacked at all. And you look at the goals Celtic have scored, which are, you know, quite typical goals in what you see from Ange Postacoglu's side. The first one is, you know, Greg Taylor coming inside where he works so well in that midfield area, playing that pass into Kyogo, a lovely turn inside and then a great finish. And then for the second goal, it sums Kyogo up because as soon as he notices that Callum McGregor is going to line that shot up, before he's even struck the ball, Kyogo is on the run. He's running towards goal, making sure that if there's going to be a rebound, that he'll get on it. Kelru spills it and Kyogo gets the ball in the back of the net. But the fans are enjoying it here. They are... Uh, having what is a bit of a party atmosphere there was thousands of them that gathered outside to watch Martin O'Neill carry the Premiership trophy up Celtic way he was followed by Ange Postacoglu and the Celtic players of course there was a, a phenomenal display in here as well before the game so it is certainly a day that the, the Celtic fans will enjoy in the sun and it's far from over as well because after the match of course we'll see the, the players go up individually and get their medals or get their hands on the trophy and you'd expect Ange Postacoglu will address this crowd as well over the, the Tannoy system Yeah, it'd be interesting to hear what he has to say because it always is but particularly in light of recent Spurs speculation where are you finding your intrigue in the second 45 in Paisley, Roger Hanna? Well, the intrigue will be whether Rangers can put their foot in the accelerator and build in the goal that Fisher Sakala gave them midway through the first half. It have been the better side in the first half. Samir so not really carrying much. Who knew Paisley was such a technological black spot, honestly? You, th- you, th- you three thought you were getting a break to tuck into your half time pie. Just keep talking, Roger. I'll we'll come in in two or three minutes. Uh, <sighs> <laughs> I'm told by technolog- technological experts that if too many people use their mobile phones <laughs> beside the, this machinery, Gordon Dale, that can happen. Well, it mm. depends. It depends. No such issues at Tyne Castle. How are the crowd mm. taking it all, Fraser? Is it is it a bit nervy? Yeah, it's very nervy around me. We sit in the main stand, as you, as you know, Gordon. We're surrounded by the, the half supporters, and usually they're quite vocal, and they've got a word or two to put in my ear as they, as they walk past for their half-time pie, but uh, not a word. And it's Ibs fans to, to my right. And I think Ibs fans will probably, after 25 minutes, begin to think, can they get back into this game? Because Hearts were completely on top without ever threatening David Marshall's goal. I think they've only had two efforts on goal. One of them was the goal from Oda, but they, they, they looked comfortable. They were one up. At that point, Hibs needed two goals. They were hardly near Xander Clark's goal at all. Then, of course, it all exploded in that 28th minute with the, with the incident where they ended up with Kevin Nisbet scoring and Alex Cochran getting that uh, that red card. So Hibs fans really got a lift from that, as did the Hibs uh, players. So I think the fans around me, the Hearts supporters, I think they're pretty worried. It's a bit subdued, as I've heard them towards the end of that first half, because it was all the action was around the penalty box. Well, probably got time to go back to Fraser, because there's a long difference between the kickoff times but an interesting change at half time Andrew McLean for Celtic yeah there is indeed and it is going to be James Forrest that is coming on for Celtic Leila Bada uh, is the man who makes way he didn't look injured certainly in that uh, first half he looked quite impressive as well he was really direct in his running he was causing Aberdeen all sorts of problems but you know James Forrest there was a, a testimonial announced this week for him this summer that we're playing against Athletic Bill Bow, so it will be a nice moment for James Forrest to, to come on and be part of Trophy Day because of course he has been part of so many of these uh, Trophy Days with Celtic, so many uh, titles he's won with the club, so James Forrest is on for the second half, Leela Bada goes off and we are back underway Clyde One Super Scoreboard Goal Flashes with Clyde Build Windows and Doors Buy now, pay nothing till 2024 And they've actually got an exclusive for you Someone has just been in touch Breaking news to tell me that apparently Underneath James Forrest's strip There is a shop that says Thanks Mark Wilson for the nice (laughs) things you said To Neil Lennon when we were in the reserves together I mean it's a pretty small font And you might not be able to to see it But the the sentiments there Ah, I knew when they forget James He's he's a humble man But look he deserves his his second half And... uh, Usually when you see things like this, it's like a send-off. It's, you know, coming on to play his last game. But he's obviously got a long contract, rewarded with a, a testimonial. It's funny, when I see him, I still see him as a young kid. 
you forget the age of him. Andrew's right. How the amount he? of titles that he's won at the club, the amount of honours that he's got is incredible. Truly remarkable servant for the club. He's the fourth most decorated Celtic player after Billy McNeil, Bobby Lennox, and Scott Brown, I believe. Uh, so he's worked so hard for Celtic. Uh, Kyogo down there, Ooh, the fans will want to see one. that. Yeah. Ooh, the week before a cup final, Celtic fans will fear the worst, and it's one of it is of it's typical Kyogo where he chases the goalkeeper down and puts him under all sorts of pressure and almost pays off. The goalkeeper just clears the ball, but he does catch Kyogo on the ankle at the same time. He does. Uh, I mean, Aberdeen get themselves into all sorts of mess there. Forrest was after him, but it's Kyogo that almost nicks it off Ruse. Ruse gets the ball, but he, he just catches Kyogo with fall through. I think he'll be okay. He'll be mm, all right. Uh, Fair uh, whack. Yeah, um, I he'll think he'll be all okay. Right. Yeah. Well, 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 we've all been there. <laughs> see, I see it when he's on the ground and he... Waits stays, up. Waits stays up and then gives it yeah. I think he'll be alright Once he's jogging about I'll give you my opinion on He's alright uh, James Forrest did come on of course On Wednesday night it Wasn't a particularly successful evening for Celtic But we've not seen him in a while Funnily enough The game, the last game before that Was the 4-0 win Against Aberdeen At Celtic Park in February So On at half time um, As you say it Kind of often that, that Had he not signed a long contract Mm. I would think that was a fair way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's obviously contracted for a long time. Now, what that means is, well, we don't know actually what it means. Mm, Kyogo's uh, gone back down. He's not comfortable at nah, all. Nah, I thought he shot his looking. He's gone back down again. He's in real bother. I think it was a hefty one. He can't put any weight in his foot by the looks of it. Well, uh, yeah, he does. <sighs> that, he does. Is a, that is an absolute whack from the goalkeeper. You think so? I, I'm not sure. Is as... I look short at me, Mark. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, Kyogo's been here before where he's went off injured and yeah, everyone and thinks oh, strips. everyone thinks he's going to miss a large period and he's back in training and he, he plays the next game. So we'll need to see what that means. But always been, well, he was impressive, I thought, he's at also Road. not daft, is he? Mm. That six-pack comes out regularly. Yeah, I used to do that. All the time. And you can't, you can't blame the guy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, seriously. I, yeah, I like that. I like that. A little bit of, look what I've got. Uh, it's a great opportunity for him. Uh, I think Mark's right. I think the other night there, I thought he was, he was uh, played very well. Um, you know, he's in good form. So, uh, look, there's no risk needed here. He scored two goals. Yeah. He is limping. I think, but to, I know what you're saying, and not to sort of pick you up too much on the choice of words. But I don't think this is about risk. He can barely put weight on his ankle. He's in. He's in real pain. Yeah, he's getting better. This is this is not one that. He would play on if this was a different mm, I'm, circumstance. I'm looking at. I've diagnosed it that he'll be fit for next week. There you go. <laughs> he'll be fit for the morrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 A wee bit of ice on that. You'll There's be no fine. There's no doubt he took a hit, but he'll be all right. Goal flashes with Clyde Built Home Improvements. Saint Mirren nil, Rangers two, Fashion Sakala two. He's cut in again off the left and lashed at home. Fashion Sakala is on a hat trick. Kyogo is as well, but he won't get one because he's gone off to be replaced by O. Rominski in the goal. Didn't look great, it has to be said. Um, it's 12 for the season now for Sakala. Rangers are comfortable. Teams coming back out at Tynecastle, Fraser. Yeah, a couple of changes for Hibs as well. Gordon, I'm looking at you. Harry McCurdy is standing at the side of the pitch, and also Ewan Henderson has, has come on as well. I'm just trying to see who's going to think. James Jago is certainly one of them and maybe Lewis Miller as well as Chris Cadden dropping back a bit Miller missed an absolute sitter just for half time I don't think it's because of that I think it's tactical because Hibs know they're going to have plenty of the ball they know they're going to have the, the, the extra man and they're going to look to make with the most of their attacking options so interesting changes by uh, Lee Johnson here because uh, they, they know they've got to get this goal Hart still not out but the Hibs fans gave their team a huge welcome when, when they came out there huge noise I think maybe just shows you what it's like we talk about it all the time about uh, ticket allocation when you give the away team uh, that full stand it certainly gives a really great atmosphere to the game so Hibs making those two changes they're certainly going for it they know they get 45 minutes one goal and they jump ahead of Hearts into fourth place now going to be interesting Harry McCurdy's had a, a complex relationship with Hibs I think safe to say since arriving but he may well imagine it what a time it would be to step up and score the goal 
That gets no. you above In- your rivals Incredible I, I don't want to go too quickly here But I think Harry Styles Will be finished Before Fraser's tonight <laughs> um, <laughs> A man in the know yeah. you Aren't you The current affairs yeah, I'm going along tonight I'd like to see that oh, I like Harry Did you see him playing the old course the other day Yeah I'm very impressed Looks like he was alright like yeah, Standard good swing. golf Looked good, good swing, well, yeah. from, what, from what we saw I think a lot of people Enjoy this concert Not for me Not no. you No no, I'm Sam <laughs> Celtic hit oh, the post And it goes really? a begging It was a nice effort from Matt O'Reilly Through a crowded penalty box Another good move Actually from Celtic The man who came on for us Working it in Incisive pass And just tries to drag it Into the corner Does Matt O'Reilly It goes through the legs Of two Aberdeen Ooh. players Hits the post and goes away Been very good at that This afternoon Celtic Finding that forward pass And I mean, understated this afternoon. Cal McGregor, again though, just always seems to punch those passes in nice way. It really does well to get shot away and it's just clipped outside of the post. Comfortable for Celtic this afternoon. It's only late in the season we stumbled across a new feature, of course, for the show, which was, could Gordon DL pull off fashion statements employed by current players? It all started with the Haxabanovich diamond, diamond teeth, yeah, I could pull grill off. teeth that he got. Nah. We had a bit of debate. Have you seen Harry McCurdy's hair? Yeah. Um, a I, purple mohawk. I, 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 I've not got enough to get the, the hair up to He's the not mohawk. Got loads either, to be honest. Yeah, but purple at my age. Nah, nah, I, I'm not going down the hairstyle. People no. who. I was thinking of the turkey trip, but I've gave that up. I'll, people who dye their hair and have it styled. You're about to like, offend a lot of people, I can just sense it. No, no. <laughs> they, as professional footballers, they're immediately under suspicion. <laughs> <laughs> of what? Don't, do not answer that. <laughs> okay. No, no, I'll be, I'll be the, the type who would go onto social media, for example, and like a comment about going back to the club you left in England. Ah, see, he knows his social media. Does this guy um, oh. acrobatic effort from Jota. Jota? Again, maybe one that was tight on the offside, but I don't think the flag went up. And if it had gone in, it would have been special. Oh, what uh, pass! I think that he is. is onside, and it was Callum McGregor plays that again. That was quite something. Jota leaps high in the air Gets a toe to it But he just can't direct mm. it Goalward Unlucky uh, Matt was right there When he highlighted That Celtic with this forward pass Have been excellent this afternoon Cutting out Aberdeen defence Wide open Yeah what was it So Harry McCurdy did a few He liked a few tweets But did he not also put something On his Instagram You know one of these Gareth Bale Yeah Things like Where he sort of Golf Wales, Wales and Madrid, Madrid In that order Yeah <laughs> Like McCurdy went and put Something like that And he had yeah. a list I think it was four on the list And he had Hibs at the bottom He's a current <laughs> Hibs player That's not a way To sell yourself he's today He's a bit no. he's, he's a bit base, I watched him there When one, he came on and he, for him, yeah. he was He was Too lively Because um, remember I told you at the time before He scored he came, a few goals Before he came here well, Remember though it's, Was it at Swindon When he got sent off And he went and Burst a protein shake All over the referee's suit Remember I didn't know that Did he really? Yeah, I told you this when he signed So he, I think he got Should see the size of the suit now I think this <laughs> <laughs> Sleeves oh, on fire the day. Sleeves are out to <laughs> Get him in the Stan Comedy Club was, The awful. jokes Absolutely like that awful. Eh? <laughs> Yeah I told you this when he signed I think he he got, I think he got sent off He went into the ref room And threw a protein shake And it like exploded All for the rest really? Wow <laughs> imagine, Takes a special Imagine Willie Collum <laughs> Coming out <laughs> And whey protein So what you're What you're telling us is, is Harry's a dafty He's lively Oh I think dude. the FA Charged him with it And that's who Hibs are turning to To get them yeah. into Europe yeah. 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 And think I so If he scores a goal This afternoon There's every chance If yeah. he gets that um, purple mohawk on the end of a cross mm. and it sends Hibs above hearts no one will be complaining <laughs> I can't believe it honestly right producer <laughs> producer Dan's on the show this afternoon okay yeah. um, you know kind of dip in and out to help us from time to time and bring his expertise but you can tell that he's he's a bit out of the loop because yeah. he's, he's just suggested foolishly irresponsibly that I ask you, Gordon DL, what's your version of golf, Wales, Madrid? <laughs> and if you think, producer Dan, I'm going there on a family show on a Saturday afternoon, you are sorely, sorely mistaken. Uh, Can we just agree golf would be in there? Golf would certainly be, be in there. I'm on the top of the list. Right, enough, enough. Okay, <laughs> anyway, Celtic 2, Aberdeen 0, 56 on the clock. Rangers 2 0 up as well. Andrew McLean. Um, is watching the game at Celtic Roger Hanna is in Paisley and it's Fashion Sakala um, 
Who has the double for Rangers Although Andrew has also just suggested This is a good one uh, Golf would be in your top three Yeah yeah Trips to Asda <laughs> Oh certainly oh, I love a trip to Asda We discussed Asda. this during the night Yeah I love uh, During the week sorry. I love a trip to Asda I make no apologies Bath for... night Love a bath night Yeah Wednesday Hump so, night There's no real space in your top three You might need to add a fourth Or bump one of them out Ooh, you know what I, have you seen? I could mix one. You, with the other enough. One. You've been getting a bit. Of, <laughs> you've been getting a bit of attention actually on Twitter this week. Have you seen it? Because you're not on Twitter, are you? Uh, don't tell me I've been getting ridiculed again. Yeah, I mean, the, I, f- I feel that the people are just picking <laughs> on me. I really do. No, but see, the thing is, the resemblance here is uncanny. Have you not seen this video? It's gone viral, and it's a. Uh, so we see a larger gentleman in an AC Milan strip but he's playing like seven asides or five asides I mean he's really large and he brings the ball down in his thigh and he volleys it into the, the top corner out of context football were one of the, the Twitter accounts that posted it uh-huh. and people are on suggesting <laughs> it's me that this looks like you I mean <laughs> <laughs> By the way, that looks. <laughs> by the way, <laughs> it's identical. It's the Do you know same you? haircut? I mean, stay, John. We stay sent me that. Same, <laughs> same, <laughs> same hair. I'll tell you what. Same, that's the way I used to put them. Up. That's just the, way I the used same to, shape. Show you. Have a look at that. That's the way I used to put them away. So, <laughs> so chest, boom, belly hanging out. That is you. <laughs> that is you. So Conor McGregor. Like, oh, like, like facially, facially, hairstyle. Same. Uh, yeah. I'm not saying anything about the belly. Be happy. Do you know what? Listen, my reputations went down the hill. I'm glad I'm past all that. Brian Kirkwood uh, sent me it. Loads of, to be honest, loads of people probably. sent me it. Gary Kirkwood got involved. Lots of people sent me it. Very like you. Very <laughs> up you. Yeah. Do you know what I forgot about? You're getting no time at all on this, but why not? We'll do it anyway. It's the end of season. It's just like the last day at school when the teacher used to wheel in the telly and you oh, knew you were getting love that. Space Jam or something on the TV <laughs> to keep you occupied. Classic. Showing my age or my lack of for some of you. Um, my head's all over the place, but let's squeeze in the second half teaser, Hugh. Okay. The second half teaser. With the Scottish Sun.co.uk slash football for the best football news and opinion online. The longest question in the world as well When you've got mm. time constraints Painfully I played, easy I think too yeah. Carry on. I played for three different clubs During my time in Scotland None of which were Celtic or Rangers In this time I won the top flight golden boot And the players player of the year award I was never capped for my country And never won any major honours in my career Who am I? Played for three different clubs During my time in Scotland None of which were Celtic or Rangers In this time I won both the top flight golden boot and the player's player of the year award. I was never capped for my country and never won any major honours in my career. Who am I? Speed is going to be vital here. Mm -hmm. Absolutely vital because that's so doable. So carry on. Get them in at Clyde SSB. Mark Wilson's shaking yeah, his head. He's got it just already. He's actually gave yeah. him the name. He's furious uh, with you. Actually, that's, great clue, with that's a ridiculous question. <laughs> you shattered the illusion that Hugh Keevans doesn't write these himself. <laughs> he gets some help as well. <laughs> well, well he was too that one, you? to write the question this afternoon. But that was, that was easy. That's... Listen, it's that all about a... participation. Nah, it's easy. It's a race. We're not trying to catch everyone. But I've won the race. Was that, I, was I got a, it before he'd finished was the question. That as easy as the chance that O has just missed there. By the way, a good ball in, just flashed past the post. I, I'll agree with you. Probably should have done better. But I think uh, not quite in the sitter category. No, no, it? not at all. But I think he's come in for some unfair criticism. I think he's he's got a big future. At Celtic Park His game time's limited Because of Kyogo And the form that he's shown But when he's come oh, in Looking for Shinny Yeah yeah. He sticks his thumb up at the ref I think he knows it He knows it's coming He's not that baller Katate oh, It's not, it's not oh, like him A bit of reaction It's not like Katate Absolutely not Right up and fold Shinny right wow. away Shown his I mean it's, blue teeth. it's just a run of the mill foul by Shinny Just pulling Hatati back You don't usually see him react I think he was frustrated Because he knew it was a good opportunity But that's a bit of experience from Shinny I really like Shinny, good player Yeah, you've always said that, haven't you? Yeah. You've always been a big A big fan, big fan Ever since the day he confronted me at Aberdeen <laughs> 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 we'll move on uh, That was interesting though I've not seen Rio Hitati React angrily To anything, to anything In his no. time here I don't think Not happy But he's been very good 
Today yeah, he's had been. a great season But missed a chunk through injury But today back in form That would be bad news for the Inverness players Sitting watching this And I take it there's been no Shot yet from the Sky cameras But Kyogo will be sitting somewhere With an ice pack on I assume We'll, we'll know about Kyogo at full time Because he's the best dancer you can, Yeah you can do that on one leg He's done it on crutches before hasn't he So yeah. he'll, mm. he'll manage I'm sure And fell over Oh that, that, I remember oh, that, that. With, the shoulder. Yeah, with the shoulder And he fell over <laughs> He does get excited He likes the after game celebrations doesn't he Where Well it's a short career You've got to enjoy them Mark That's what I say that's a bit that's advice that's, 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 that's lovely That's a nice scene Really interesting though Like This is going to sound obvious Because clearly I can't speak Japanese right And his English is Is limited But I Did an interview with him A couple of weeks ago And was struck at Just how Sort of shy And sort of unassuming he is Like again I know that sounds daft Because you think Well maybe he wouldn't be shy If you could speak Japanese But not that There was more to it than that The translator was there And he was saying that he, Um he says oh, he wants to tell you that he's actually he's very nervous. The the lights from the camera are making him very nervous, and it is honestly Hugh. He's so quiet, so sort of shy and unassuming. And then you see the way he parties at the, the, the celebrations. You see how he's yeah. sort of killer instinct on the pitch and the way he goes about his business. Oh, Al- Alistair Johnson now down injured for Celtic, oh, yeah. and he's been outstanding all day, and he doesn't look. Very he does not look happy at no. all. That looks like what was his that injury looks like before? A that comes, injury, think, yeah. yeah, all of the injury that he's had, you can see the disappointment in his face. The way he's sitting as well, this one doesn't look good news. No, which would be a shame because he was right. It been outstanding all afternoon. You can see a marked difference when he plays in the side, not just defensively, everything from build up play, movement, that final pass is. So much better than yeah. when he's not on the team. It's amazing. Celtic have played so well. Uh, they've been so entertaining, and yet Kyogo and Alistair mm-hmm. Johnson. I mean, if you get into a cup final with neither of them, um, it wouldn't be great for Celtic. I mean, Ralston and Burnaby are no Johnson and Taylor. Um, and Andrew Postacoglu yesterday, you know, saying he hoped the, the main hope was to get through today unscathed, and it, it certainly doesn't look that way. Particularly Alistair Johnson. If you've been out with that an injury to that mm. leg, it certainly looks similar. You come back and then you have to go off again. Uh, next week sounds like might be a struggle. Might be a struggle. Um, the only thing I would say is that he's had 60 minutes under his belt. So if it's not as bad as we first think and they can maybe strap him up, then seven days. I, I'd expect days. to see. You know, he doesn't have to train midweek, really. You know, because he's not missed a large chunk. So. They'll give it all the time. I think they can. I think they'll give it right up until. It's not particularly limping, but the signs for me was when the camera went on him, he realised same injury, reoccurrence. Mm-hmm. But look, if you're Ralston, you're thinking you're beauty. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that's 100%, what I'd be thinking. 100%. Oh, you know, you've got to be selfish. On, yeah. On 100 Yeah, I'm, I'm the same as you. Before any big game, I was hoping the centre forward would maybe get a wee niggle. Cabrias come on for Stevenson <laughs> for Hibs, Real team which player. means Hibs have made four subs and there's only 55 minutes gone. So sometimes that can do that to you, I suppose, where hearts are down to 10 men. You know, they're disadvantaged, but it's, it's causing Lee Johnson to almost overthink. Yeah, constantly search for solutions. Mm. He knows he has to go and win the game. Yeah, sometimes you can overthink it. Uh, he's obviously trying everything. Um, it'll be interesting. <sighs> Look, we all know playing against 10 men isn't the easiest because they'll just camp in there, they'll make it very difficult, they'll not give you any space. Um, they're at home, the point does them. So, so far, it's it's good news for Hearts, but still a long way to go in that game. Well, the Hibs fans can't point the finger at the manager. Sometimes they point the finger and they'll say, well, he left it too long. He should have changed things up, he should have freshened things up. He's went for it, he's done all in his power. It's now over to the players. On the pitch To make The advantage count The numerical advantage count And what have we got left Half an hour left Maybe a wee bit longer At Tyne Castle yeah, It's going to be a A big finish there Oh do you know what we need to do today it's well, one of my I know what we need I was hoping you would not remember It's one of my favourite days of yeah, the year the It's results. like Christmas day for me oh, the, predictions. the predictions Yeah, We need to get the pre-season predictions out now I wonder should we do it just now and do it in the studio or will we try and grab a word with Roger Hanna and Fraser Wishart get them involved at full time because they are guilty 
potentially as well. Mm, no, mm. I would out them. Well, you've got to get the big one right. So mm. anybody well, that's not listen, got the big one right wait, is just you wait in case, is, in case you've forgotten. You might have. Do you know? What, I remember. We'll wait. We'll get them. No, later. no. And of course, I mean there will be. There, there's no escape. A lot of the other pundits that they'll be listening. Marvin yeah. Bartley. Did he give predictions? Don't know if he must Andy have. Andy Haldy, Kenny Miller. Who yeah. must, some of them must we have all, done it. We all done it. So we'll need to have a look And we'll need to come up with a, a scoring system What is it, a point for every position you get right? I can't remember And a hundred for the, the, the top of the league team Can you? I can't that, remember that's fair. I can't remember my table I, I made a complete Don't mess worry. of that I've got, I've got a few bad ones yeah, in there Because the week prior to that I done the show here with um, Ewan Cameron And he forced me into a prediction I went Celtic And then I changed my mind Mark Wilson is stunned because a, Cel- a topless Celtic fan, <laughs> a young man, has been spotted crowd surfing. Uh, but you know the most park. impressive thing? He's getting passed backwards. <laughs> you know, it's crowd surf. It's not in his side. I he's getting passed that. up the stand. How good would that uh, row eight mil- <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen that before yeah. at a football game. Sometimes see it at the old rock concerts. So, but no. Someone somewhere is stressing about the health and safety implications oh, yeah. of that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway That's the quick way to go to the toilet um, Yeah, interesting <laughs> Interesting indeed uh, The crowd's certainly enjoying the football on the pitch As well as the entertainment of it Yeah, it feels like the injuries have had a little bit of an impact And sort of oh, it's diminishing very, the momentum of it all Very costly 2-0 if you, if you lose Alistair Johnson and Kyogo For the cup final it's yeah, just been a wee bit of stop start as well I think Aberdeen have played their part in that This second half A few fouls And this latest one on Matt O'Reilly I think Matt O'Reilly's been really good as well today That's a wee bit late He just passes it back into Hitati And he's taken out You can see Hitati again Incredibly frustrated At the nature of how this second half is going Yeah, Al- um, Alistair Johnson had gone off Remember there's a cross that's deep James Forrest not seen a great deal mm. Of him since he came on it's a very different right side now with Anthony Ralston over there as well, replacing Johnson. Mm. Well, Celtic just try to entice Aberdeen out. Aberdeen haven't had a shot on target the whole day. Not you, one. Know, you know what I was going to say? We've not spoke about him, not had much to do, but Awata, you know, up against Duke, one of the best strikers in the league this season, and it's been... Quiet oh, from both of them I this ex- afternoon. Ex- You would have expected better It was nice footwork from Jota You could tell he was thinking about the shot But just ran out of space So he rolled it to Hitati In a perfect shooting position Sort of 19 yards And he completely drags it Just snatches at it And it goes wide He is capable of so much more than that From their mark He's that good that you expect him to hit the target I actually think the Aberdeen player Getting across just slightly puts him off Makes him take it out wee half second Quicker than he probably would have and he just drags it Disappointing Effort there uh, Yuan and Janelli Are hurt At the Edinburgh Derby They both Ran into each other Off the ball um, Which you don't see Too often So A few of them Have been in the wars There today Similar story At Celtic Park Remembering Paisley Rangers lead by those Two fashion Sakala goals To nil So St Mirren have had Levels of success Against both Glasgow's big two This season But it doesn't look like It'll happen today Cholak Barisic Arfield And Devine All coming on For Rangers Well Michael Beale uh, Sentimentality Comes into it With Arfield And this uh, The swan song For him uh, With regard to Devine He's He's the future So Michael Beale Is just uh, Taking care of The past And the present And the future Yilmaz Sakala Tavernier And Hadji all going off Yeah it's a good opportunity after, You know unless St Mirren do something drastic The game's away from them um, It's an opportunity to give players some game time And um, it's all, it'll probably be always in the game plan For Michael Beale to get Three or four on at the one time And just rotate And he's obviously doing that in a good position Young boy Lowry though, is still sitting on the bench, you know, I keep going on about it, but we did hear that he was the future, he was an incredibly talented player. I think a lot of Rangers fans would, would like to see more of him, um, because he has looked impressive in, in shades, but 
I don't know what he has to do to get any man. See, see the way Michael Beale's going with the, the amount of midfield players that he's got at his disposal. He's obviously uh, brought in another one. Um, I think it's got to be a limited time. End of the road for him. I think so, Mark. Um, as you quite rightly say, I think if he was if he was in that pecking order, he was no, those sort of a plans in the back of Michael Beale's thoughts. Games like this today, get him on, whether it's half an hour or a second half and get him involved. You may see him before the end of the game, but I just don't think with the amount of midfield players that Rangers have got now that it's going to leave a big opportunity for him. Well, he'll have to make a decision himself. As I say, Rangers fans had high hopes for him, but if that is the case, then the Rangers manager's been honest enough with, with players in the past. He has to be honest enough with the younger players as well and say, look, you're either part of it or out you go and loan and play some real football. John Lundstrom wearing the captain's armband, such as the disrupted nature of the team. No Tavernier, no Goldson. I think even maybe... Who else would have been in, in front of Lundstrom in the pecking order? Maybe I'd, is it Ryan Jack? Ryan Jack's playing, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, I, I did see a clip of Lundstrom's goal in the training ground the other day. Do you think that's what's done it for? That's him? what's a done it. A okay. training ground goal, sensational yeah, volley. I'm sure. I didn't think, honestly, I didn't think he had something like that in his <laughs> locker. But that's training that's he earned him. That's he earned him the armband, Gordon. I'm certain. Um, he was name checked specifically by Michael Beale yesterday, of course, along with Tavernier and Goldson, and talking about the experience they've got left after summer departures. So, maybe just a nod to that. Well, it's uh, kind of petering out at Celtic Park now. Uh, the crowd will be getting ready for the after-match celebrations. Uh, the, the players too, perhaps, and we'll see. Kyogo and uh, Alistair Johnson and see what kind of shape they're in when they take part in those celebrations but you've got to say that Celtic have tried their level best to entertain to emphasise their superiority and that they are going to end the season with more points more goals less draws uh, than they did uh, last season so all you can do in a day like this the objective is to show why you are the champions why you are getting the trophy at the end of the game and uh, Celtic have done that and uh, they can also go with the satisfaction that statistically they are better than they were last season everyone's in the the wars today Chris Cadden's now been stretchered off he was filled in the air by James Hill fell awkwardly you could immediately sense the discomfort and he's been stretchered off you know what there's no good time to get injured but none worse than the last day of the season. What about the first day? Mm. No, oh, yeah, the first, first, uh, no, no, no. Yeah. The first day you're still first minute. Okay, so it wrecks your holiday. You mean exactly? You are <laughs> oh, in doing guy. rehab. The physio. I'll see you next week. Um, what do you mean? I'm off on holiday next week. Now you've got an injury. We need to assess you. And quite often, you're not even dealing with a first team physio because he's away in his holiday. You're dealing with. Some mm. other physio that's been drafted in yet you're in. Oh, it's do you horrible. know I went I went too early there, Gordon. I went with you, but I totally agree with Matt. <laughs> See, I knew you would. Because I just used to hate even getting injured on a Saturday. You had to get in a Sunday. That was worse. <laughs> that was bad. Uh, that was a bad show. I just, just pretend you're not injured. I went straight for the town. I just didn't mess about. <laughs> 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 oh, Celtic oh, might have nipped in oh, for a yes. third and indeed no, they no, have. No, it's not. No. Offside. Mm. Oh. Jota cannot believe he's offside there. I think he's. I think he's got a show here. Yeah, well, it'll be looked at anyway, like yeah. all goals are. Um, so let's have a look and see if we can spot anything immediately. Nothing doing yet. Offside. Oh, offside, offside, yeah. oh, I'll take it back. It's yeah. a good yeah. shout from the assistant referee. I think that will be. You know. So was, was it Matt O'Reilly just kind of stuck out a toe? Diverted it through, and this is the thing. Like, that is a brilliant shout yeah. from the assistant. I mean, you're, no one's ever going to talk about it. You only no. talk about the ones they get wrong, and they, those must be so hard with all that crowded penalty box because you're not even looking for Jota because the pass isn't. I don't think it's intended for him. No, no, not at all. So you have to give credit to the assistant. Brilliant referee. I did have my stint. Remember at the start of the season on the no, you were good on the that. line. I was. <laughs> I no, think I got were good everyone wrong. So it's incredibly difficult job. Mm. Talking about the celebrations, Hugh, did you see uh, you see Man City's trophy day last week and how they conducted it, where the players went in and everyone came out and all the staff came out and the Man City strip, but the amount of staff yeah. that lined up almost like a guard of honour for 
each player to give them a high five shows that that obviously comes from the manager appreciating the, the work the staff do wonder if we'll see it in similar Tate Dunn and Tate and Dunn Fraser and Taylor are they all on I think for St Mirren or no Tate and Dunn for Fraser and Taylor I would assume um, Roger Hannon very unclear with these communications Roger's not, not like having him. a good day is he like he's got his mindset on a big uh, dinner tomorrow night I think Real that's football writers yeah, are lost Rod, yeah. remind me Hugh because a lot of the winners are known already aren't they yeah. Ange Postacoglu I saw this this morning Kyogo um, is, so is that public already is it well uh, you're just giving it away now <laughs> Ro- Roger no, that's just who Hugh thinks is going to win it yeah. is what he means Roger's scratching his baldy but he couldn't <laughs> tear his hair out no that's <laughs> <laughs> That's just who thinks is good. I'm, I'm still, I'm still holding out. I'm still holding out for for Kevin Van Veen. I must say. Maybe, <laughs> maybe Max Johnson. That's uh, public. and all that for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> young player of the. That's yeah. hard. That one isn't. It has to be under. Well, it's yeah, it's got stipulations. Yeah, that's right. And Max Johnson, by the way, I know he came in the second half of the season, played more regularly. But uh, by the way, what about his go you know, lose his goal him, Gordon, yeah. early on in the season? Mm-hmm. Go to lose him. Well, it's out of contract. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. You can't Where's he off to? <laughs> Can south. we get another exclusive on that? All, down, so, all down sorts south of probably. No, I think there's even no Bologna. <laughs> Bologna just read everyone. Oh, oh, I, don't love it. I think there's it's been a few fast. suggestions. Um, what Good was the club? Um, was it Norwich? Was it? No, where was it? He went. Yeah, to Norwich. He went down, visited the, yeah. the training ground, apparently. A man who on my train this morning wearing a Napoli shirt. There you are. Well, they won Did the you get off at Clyde Bank? Cosmopolitan people in Clyde Bank. Did you get off at Clyde Bank? Yeah. I, yeah, because I think I saw him. I went for a coffee before the show and saw a guy in a Napoli yeah. top. Well, there you are. Well, it's big news. Napoli, yeah. there. Did you see the manager getting his first tattoo that won the league. Oh, it was a belter Napoli yeah. on his forearm. Yeah. Oh, all right. Uh, you thought Hugh? No. Oh, what will he do with the sack him? Exactly. Uh, that, that's <laughs> what annoys me about no, these people. There for the old guy, partner's name God on your on your arm, and then you. Uh, I, split oh, up. I'd need some arms. <laughs> <laughs> Just st- I've no room mate Stick it on that right I'll leg laser me again <laughs> I'm just looking the through tippics. these Just looking through these predictions Honestly Who's oh, the worst? Magnificent. Who's the worst? Well the thing is what's, What is quite tough about this is There are oh. If we do have a goal for Celtic This time that's going to stand Goal flashes With Clyde Built Home Improvements And it's Carl Starfelt It's a corner kick He Mm. was under Not enough pressure If you're Barry Robson But does ever so well Bullet header Underside of the bar And it's Celtic 3 Aberdeen 0 Well that used to be the way of it For Celtic centre halves You know Come up uh, And assert yourself And an absolute free header But to be fair to Carl Starfelt He puts it away Terrifically well yeah, it does well there. It's as routine a corner as you'll ever see. A good delivery into the middle of the six yard box, and Starfield doesn't have to do much actually. He just stands here. <laughs> These two have done this a couple of times today. Goal flashes with Clyde Built Home Improvements. And now Rangers go 3 0 up at almost the same time, and it is Antonio Cholak. He's had a real strange up and down season and out with injury. All things said, it's his 18th goal of the season, which is a pretty good return, you would have to say. Um, but back in the team and scoring goals, Antonio Cholak. I think I think you make a great point there. 18 goals, and you don't really you don't you don't count on him as a regular. Um, you're right; he's had a mixed bag this season. Um, he'll need to get a good pre-season under his belt. See where he goes from here. The one thing. The, the jury's still out on him for me The one thing I look at him sometimes and think Yeah, I watched him at Easter Road that night I thought Rangers were brilliant And his movement and his goals were great um, And then he sort of disappeared again He's back on the sub, he's got a goal today You just wonder what the future holds for him Because Michael Bale obviously mm. with Morelis leaving Certainly got yeah, his strength a, in that a position point blank header There was a corner, Arfield won the first header At the near post and then Cholak with a simple finish uh, so both Celtic and Rangers are three 0 up. Celtic made more changes there. David Turnbull I saw coming on. Who else? Ben Summers. Hatati and O'Reilly went off. There you go. You notice Hatati picked up the litter as he walked off. That's a Japanese characteristic. When I went there for the World Cup, the stadiums after the game were cleaner than they were before the game started. The crowds tidy up the stadium before they leave. It'll never catch on. No, no. Um, mm, great, no great introduction that for Ben Summers. A nice tenacious winning of the ball back. Drove forward. Pulled back for a free kick Yep 
good young player I think the Celtic manager really likes him he's getting more and more game time and it's about taking an opportunity I know he's only got 10 minutes here to, to make an impression but these are the, mm. the the ones when you look at the good young Celtic players historically who have come in mm. they've all made an impression one man James Forrest we're chatting about scores in his debut makes an impression so you have to take your opportunity remember that Euro 2004 when Greece won it Aye. Remember, you can yeah. remember that quite well that's when Ben Summers was born <laughs> right at that point just to 2004 yeah. that's that's crazy yeah. it's not great is it I mean don't get me wrong there are, well it's great for him there are, his family oh, there are 2006s that have played in the Premiership this season remarkably yeah. so makes you feel <laughs> anyway, much older than you are uh, Rangers are now <laughs> three at the back King has come on for Matondo so just kind of changing things up 3-0 three, three up there nothing really uh, doing do you know what I've realised it's going to be tough to do the proper Sort of league table of how you're of of who won the predictor, if you like, because oh, oh I've got, and every time oh. I try and talk about the predictions, we get interrupted by things that are far more important. Goal flashes with Clyde Built Home Improvements. Oh, has added a fourth for Celtic across from the left, header into the top corner. As simple as you like. Eighty two gone, and Celtic are cruising four nil to the good, and another goal for oh. Well, that's the way to stir up the crowd before the party. Uh, it's a terrific ball in and a fine header from O. So Aberdeen's defence beaten by two headers, one by an out and out striker, one by a centre back, and they are getting a going over. It's a great assist from Jota as well, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, he's just his tailor made ball, brilliant balls, just stood it up, far post for him. I tell you what, O didn't even need to put that as far as the corner. Jump right. I was just going to say that and I thought, does that sound stupid? Because no. it, it did not need to put it right in the corner. Uh, um, as, a, as a striker that been in that position, I'm thinking, yeah, that's an easy target. There you go. But he's actually, <laughs> you wait, you see the way he's aiming his head and he's buried it at the goalkeeper. There was no point even moving. Great for it. I told you this lad, I like the look of this lad. I think he brings something different. Uh, I think he can goals. It's his first season. I would check He'll be this. a big player. No, I actually think what's happened is a problem with Alan Muir's walkie-talkie or whatever it is. I'm sure it's not. His earpieces, mode of communication. I think it's more that than a check on the goal. I could be wrong, um, but he was over getting his equipment seen to, which mm. is an unfortunate phrase, and he's back over again. Yeah, just get on with it. I think we'll be all right for Eight minutes you can't remaining. Can't do that, Matt. You can't just make up you got long. It's got to be right. He's all good. There, are he's got there new, bat- go. new batteries and he's fine. He's, he's <laughs> get on his way. Way. What happened before this technology? The referee, the games. Now they depend on it so must, much. It must be getting tense at Tyne Castle. A good save there from Xander Clark. He threw himself high to the right to push away a Hanlon header, and we're now at the territory where a Hibs goal wins this, doesn't yeah, it? And yeah. it, it, it it puts them on top But they're seven minutes Behind is Oh that's it? true Yeah <laughs> So there's still about The time to go The Dazzler said it'd be a draw Right before O oh, so rudely Interrupted me we'll, we'll do it We'll need to sort of Do this properly And sporadically Throughout the week Because We can't Give you points For correct guesses On the predictor Until tomorrow really mm-hmm. Because we don't know If What order Kilmarnock and St Johnson Will finish in uh, Sorry Kilmarnock and Ross County Will finish in so it's a bit tricky and it could change everything. So just an overview since it's the final weekend. Let's We're all tidying <laughs> up the pitch. <laughs> Look at this. Have you ever seen it like this? Let's go through them here because you you lot have had an absolute nightmare. I mean, if we start at the top, obviously Gordon Diel and Hugh Keevans, you need to hang your heads in shame because yeah. you got the main one wrong. Yeah, uh, you both predicted Rangers to win the title and in case you hadn't heard, that was not the case. Okay. Your uh-huh. defence, please. I said I, the week prior I went for Celtic and then for some reason I just I, I totally bottled it and went Rangers right, don't know why I, I can okay. only apologise your defence Mr Keevans should you wish to offer a not guilty plea you've been asked to tip something that is mm. 38 games away in a season where 8 managers lost their job that I believe mm. out of the Scottish Cup to Darvo Dundee United lost 9-0 to Celtic mm. See on that point Hugh I've got a funny feeling I've got second wrong as well <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure I'm buying it Mr <laughs> Keevans You've tried But that is not in the spirit Of the pre-season predictor So Well Bail denied um, My on... my defence is I wish 358 other offences To be taken into consideration uh, Which obviously means Mark Wilson well done, you right. ah, I, said, I don't like bringing mm. it up But I was right Because what? I looked at the evidence uh-huh. 
of what I saw last season and I looked at the evidence of the squad and players getting better and a, a second season for Ange Postecoglou and, and I we'll, just couldn't see them And I'm going to shout for Celtic TV yeah, So I may as well keep not, in the loop No, 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 no Because here's the thing It's just knowledge from the guy And nah, he's not the nonsense. only one Andrew McLean Who's at Celtic Park today I've got his sheet He knows his stuff He yeah. does know his stuff This guy He does He predicted Celtic to win the league Well done, and Andrew And we're not done yet I'll run Fraser and Rogers past them Later as well Now obviously Gordon and Hugh If you got the top one wrong yeah. You got the second one wrong So we know that for bad sure Bad start for you too It is a bad, bad start, start. Now we go on to third Oh no There's a theme it. here Goes pear shaped I, I won't be too far away Everybody Get went hearts Everybody went hearts Mark Wilson hearts Hugh Keevans hearts Gordon Dale hearts All done Can't get that one right either Which means Mark You can't get your fourth right Because you went Aberdeen Oh I was so unlucky Gordon, don't want You went Aberdeen in fourth So you can't get it Uh oh Do you know Hughes, what's coming Hughes here He's looking at you Do you know what's coming here No I can Almost forgive you for the top one uh-huh. Your fourth place suggestion <laughs> Come on look. Dundee United <laughs> Oh no <laughs> That's well, made my see, day At the time At the time <laughs> When they beat AZ Altmar At the time uh, again. Do you know what I'll actually give you that I un- I understand that they, they made, That's where they, they finished Round about there last season Got into Europe Well done against Altmar But this is the whole point It is about a bit of fun With hindsight Dundee United are going to finish bottom and go down. You I, I know who I tipped to go down. Fourth. And uh, this we'll is, to that. there's more trouble coming. I don't know what you're laughing at. I don't, <laughs> what, are you, what are you two laughing at? You both had Dundee United in fifth. <laughs> I know. Uh, only one that, was a, that was a nervous laugh for me because oh, I knew what was coming. <laughs> and yours, Mark Wilson, doesn't get much better because you, you, you took Kelly I know. <laughs> This is woeful. You did, you did a lot of your good work with Celtic aye, to win aye, the league aye, and Rangers to finish second, that. but yeah. there it was awful. I didn't care about the rest. I of just the want one right. Did I get one right? You, you took me. Aberdeen to finish sixth. At least they got them in the top six. Um, uh-huh. Seventh place for you, Gordon DL, Ross County. It's not brilliant. Oh, no. Hugh Evans, you took Kelly seventh again. Uh, Mark, you took Hibbs. Mm, nah, nah. I, like I regard all this as a failure on the part of managers and players. Exactly, it's not. It's not your fault. No, and it, beca- fault. it becomes sort of much of a muchness thereafter. I think Hugh, you took Motherwell eighth, which what are they going to probably finish seventh? Are they seventh? Um, yeah, nah, they'll be seventh. Fair enough. Okay, Ma- Gordon, you took Motherwell eighth. Ma- oh! Mark, you took Ross County eighth. Oh, that's not great. It's not good. Livy 9th And like I say Much of a muchness there I won't get hung up on them However Mark Wilson And Hugh Keevans Public apology please To the people <laughs> of Paisley Because you both <gasps> took St Mirren To finish dead last Rock <sighs> bottom ridiculous. 12 out of 12 They've gone and finished 6th He's a contender for manager of the year Beating <laughs> Celtic and Rangers And you had them both to go down oh, and I, I do apologise To all the people of St Mirren Because they've been terrific this season In my defence Had they not had a poor Again, the cup league, The League Cup the was league terrible cup, And I I saw enough there That I thought they would struggle But Who did I have to get there? Horrendous All I could say is They flipped it <laughs> <laughs> 38 game Again, flick. We won't dwell on it Because it takes the fun out of it But they, they they did stink the place out In the League Cup groups And that's yeah. when you were asked yeah. To make your opinion So yeah. fair enough um, Gordon you had St Johnston To go straight down <laughs> Oh unlucky You were in the running You had Kelly to finish 11th Oh so I'm still in the mix You might still get that right uh, Hugh you had St Johnston To finish 11th As did you Mark Wilson oh. yeah. yeah So um, no good <laughs> Tell you what We asked you for a couple of bonus ones Which were inter- which were equally entertaining Top goal scorer Gordon DL And Hugh <laughs> Evans Went Alfredo Morelos <laughs> oh. <sighs> I you're laughing at Who did I go you for? You guys don't even hear You went Jackamakis <laughs> <laughs> Packed his case and went Oh I can't believe that uh. um, Here's an interesting one All three of you Went Jota Player of the Year Oh. Every single oh. one of you He's not been bad By any stretch of the imagination Just hold that thought He's well, standing over he a free kick, just, kick yeah. He might just bump this free He started kick great against Aberdeen With that, yeah. that go into top but corner did he win player of the year? He certainly didn't Well we'll know oh. tomorrow night No the PFA, the PFA. Is, is done um, I'm surprised not even one, one of you Went for, for Kyogo, Kyogo I must say on the um, Oh, oh he's hit the bar, bar. Oh. Yeah, but the rebound is in the back of the net Goal flashes with Clyde Built Home Improvements. And it's O oh again at the double Celtic 5, Aberdeen 0. They're finishing the season 
Like they started in many of those early season games Blowing teams away And at Celtic 5, Aberdeen nil. Been absolutely terrific this afternoon And then the set piece from Jota Is Hits wonderful the Hits the crossbar But oh, much like Kyogo earlier on It's the first one to react and tucks it away so uh, then you can really say that uh, Jota's Celtic, the player of the year No, no. But you can say Oh oh Two goals <laughs> Oh dear <laughs> uh, And very quickly then Just before we have our fun with you three You both went You all went No you didn't actually Gordon and Hugh Went Celtic to win the Scottish Cup We'll find out Oh yes yeah, sure. you yeah. uh, Mark you went Rangers to win the Scottish yeah, Cup Yeah 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 You and also took, you took Hearts to win the League Cup <laughs> That's a random choice <laughs> <laughs> Who I did that you and Hugh both went Rangers to win the League Cup. Hugh, you've just copied me. So you, you two had Rangers to win a double. I know. He's, he is a, oh, just oh, when should you be say, ridiculed for when such. When you say it like that, it does sound really silly. I hope you get hammered on social media. <laughs> so everyone get your thoughts in. <laughs> <laughs> Did you not tip Dundee United to finish fourth though? I just did, just I did. But I got the big one right, so that's the one you want, right? You're not the only one. A lot, a lot of your, a, f- a few of your colleagues got the big one right as yeah, well. But I'll it, reveal who. They know their stuff. Lee Johnson has been booked because he ran into the Harps technical area to get the ball it's finished in Paisley Roger Hanna it's finished in Mirinil Rangers 3 Rangers finish with a well deserved victory here in Paisley two goals one in either half from Fashion Sakala and then substitute Antonio Cholak putting the icing on the cake near the end St Mirna was a difficult afternoon it started losing Ryan Strain to injury after just six minutes with Marcus Fraser coming on it was a slow burner a couple of off target efforts at either end but then a bit of quality in 26 minutes Red Van Yelmaz feeding the ball to Fashion Sakala on the inside left channel he cut past two or three St Mirna defenders and then hit a close range fierce shot that Scott Sanza just couldn't keep out on the line Robbie McCrory called into action to save from Marco Hara before the break but then just a couple of minutes into the second half the game really puts to bed with a second Rangers goal and again Sakala man of the match a really impressive contribution cutting in off the left again a powerful right foot shot across young goalkeeper Peter Arminski and inside the far post the game hit a bit of a dip but then a lot of substitutions on the other side and it was two of those Rangers changes that linked for the third goal in 77 minutes a corner on the right flicked on by Scott Arfield and there for a point blank header was Antonio Cholak for his 18th goal of the season the Rangers players are waiting right now going to be, uh, applaud the supporters packed behind that goal they've finished a poor season on a high Michael Beale said it's good riddance to the season I wonder how many will be tipping Rangers for a title next year St Mirren nil, Rangers 3 yeah, don't you go anywhere I'm not finished with you yet Roger Hanna sit tight but first of all it's full time at Celtic Park Andrew McLean Celtic 5, Aberdeen nil. the full-time score and Ange Postacoglu's side wrap up their Premiership season with a convincing and entertaining win before they left the trophy after the game. Celtic started well, they looked at it from the opening minute back to their flowing best and after a few half chances it was that man Kyogo who opened the scoring. Greg Taylor with a pass to find Kyogo in the box, a smart turn in the box onto his left foot and he found the top corner with his shot to open the scoring he then got a quick second 32 minutes in Cal McGregor's shot from the edge of the box was saved by Keller Roos but he could only palm it into the path of Kyogo who found the back of the net into the second half and a big worry for Celtic Kyogo running to close down Keller Roos Roos slid in won the ball but caught Kyogo in the follow through and it was bad enough that the striker couldn't continue he was struggling to put weight on his foot and that's a big concern before the Scottish Cup final next week all came on and Celtic continued to push for goals McGregor found Matt O'Reilly in the box his shot hit the outside of the post Alistair Johnson was also then forced off with injury uh, seven days out from that final at Hamden the third goal came through Carl Starfelt he headed in Matt O'Reilly's corner off the underside of the bar and in a fourth followed shortly after a lovely cross from the left from Chota all got up and headed that one right into the top corner all then got his second and Celtic's fifth Chota with a free kick this time that one hit the bar but all was quickest to react and he turned in the rebound a pretty perfect end to what has been a very impressive league campaign for Celtic the podium is now being set up in the centre circle at the moment the trophy left to follow here at Celtic Park but the full time score is Celtic 5 Aberdeen 0 well, we'll hear plenty more from Andrew McLean. He will describe the trophy celebrations and everything that goes on to us. We're not finished yet in the Edinburgh Derby. It is going to be a very tense finish. One goal for Hibs now would do it. Can 10 man hearts hang on? Roger Hanna, just before we go, would you like to hear your pre season predictions back? 
Uh, fire away, Gordon. OK, you also took Rangers to win the league, so you can hang your head in shame along with Gordon Biel and Hugh Keevans. We already know that, of course, means you got second place wrong because you tipped Celtic. You too, like everyone, to be fair, took Hearts to finish third. Understandable mistake. But you joined the Dundee United in fourth club, Roger Hanna. Now, I think you'll find, Gordon, there was actually nothing the matter with my predictions last summer. Where the problem arises is that the teams I tipped, they performed well below par rather than me performing well below par, you'll find. And also, also, you need to live and learn from these things. If you look at your dear friend on Twitter, Derek FM, who's pointing out the number of correct ACA predictions from all the pundits this season... And I'm clear at the top of the ACA prediction list. You've been, so in the you studio, see, you've been in the studio about three times. Let's not get carried away on the ACA predictions no, before no, we're done no, with this. No, I'm, just, I'm talking about learning from early season. It was a, it was a difficult pre-season for me with the predictions, but I've, I've soared away as the season's you, gone. You're Robert, telling me, because we're not done yet. What I will say in Roger Hanna's defence, the makeup of his top six is not bad, because he's got Aberdeen in fifth and Hibs in sixth. So he's at least got most of the, the, the clubs right who made the split. And he's got Livy 7th, not a million miles off. Ross County 8th, not great. Kelly 9th, Motherwell 10th, that'll teach you. And again, people of Paisley, it was that League Cup group stage that's done them in for the predictions. Roger had St Mirren in 11th in the playoffs and St Johnston to go straight down, which they have defied. Credit to you, Roger Hanna. You did correctly predict, unless something drastic happens with Van Veen tomorrow, you predicted Kyogo would be the top scorer of the Premiership. Well done to you. You predicted Celtic would win the Scottish Cup, and we will find out in due course. Rangers to win the League Cup, we know that was not the right one. And perhaps the most rogue shout of the season from any of you, now that we've got the benefit of hindsight, can anyone remember who Roger tipped for Player of the Year? John anyone? Lundstrom. I've admitted I'll admit to this. No. You're going to tell them, tell your friends to see how they react. No, you can't. Just give me a name, come on. Also, you, you can't possibly know that John Suter's going to be injured an hour into the first game of the <laughs> John season. John Suter! <laughs> <laughs> he's, the, he's the only old firm defender with a worse injury record than Mark Wilson. And I've tipped him to be player of the John, year. Don't start turning that around at me now, Roger. It was you who made the statement as a poor shit. For what it's worth, he's looked pretty good in the last few games since he came back. It's all I can <laughs> offer you, Roger Hanna. But needless to say, John Souter did not manage to lift player of the year. There we are. We've had your fun. Go and speak to John Souter and Michael Bealan. Keep in touch. <laughs> Take care. We're not done with Fraser Wisher yet. Andrew McLean, you're still there. What's happening in the building the stage? Yeah, the stage is being built at the moment. I can see it. It's his Champions 2022-23 Celtic Football Club. It's got the Celtic badges on it as well. The pyrotechnics are being laid out. There was some live music as well just on the full-time whistle. Not a single Celtic fan has left the stadium yet. The players have gone down the tunnel at the moment. They'll be out shortly. We'll see if they have any specific T-shirts or anything. They, of course, at Tynecastle had those back-to-back Champions T-shirts on. So we'll see if they've got anything special organised for today. But the Celtic fans will be in their seats for quite a while yet because there will be a lot of celebrations to follow. The medals are in place. I can actually see uh, some more banners being put up by staff on the pitch that do say back-to-back champions. That will be another photo opportunity for the Celtic players to stand and share with supporters but yes I'll keep you posted on when the players are set to come out and collect those medals and when Callum McGregor is going to go up and lift that trophy Right we should have time then we've still got a break to take but we should have time I want to get back for the trophy lift but well done to you Andrew McLean you did correctly predict that Celtic would win the league and you're seeing the trophy today Yes, I am indeed, and I also went for Lauren Shankland as top goal scorer, which I think I got a bit of stick for, but he's not too far off, you know so yep. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not too unhappy with that. Okay, uh, yeah, I think I'll, I'll, I'll give you a bit of credit there. Um, Rangers to finish second, well done. Hearts to finish third, everyone did, he's got that wrong. Aberdeen fourth. It's the rest of Andrew's top six that worries me. He had Ross County and Dundee United to finish in the top six. It's not brilliant. Uh, Hibs 7th, Livy 8th, St Mirren 9, Motherwell 10, Kelly 11 So we might not be too far off on that And the poor Perth Saints, Andrew had them straight to go down I don't know if you guys all discussed this But Jota, player of the year And this is the thing with Andrew McLean Because you give with one hand, well done He predicted Celtic to win the league But he thought Rangers would get a cup double 
Oh, yeah, at the same time, way off. Oh, way off. You were hoping I was going to miss that one out, Andrew. I did have some logic to that. I looked to last season, Giovanni Van Bronckhorst was very good in cup competitions, won the Scottish Cup, got to the Europa League final. I yep. thought, you know what? He might continue that cup form into this season, and then we all know what happened. So, yeah. Exactly. So we'll leave that there. Trophy lift is next. Now, a word from our podcast.